The Rockwood fans come alive. Hey, we're four wide here, guys. Now you've got five seconds on the play clock. I don't know if they see that. And now you've got a timeout. Coach Webb takes a timeout. I think maybe wow. he didn't like what he saw out of his offense on this very big play. Coach Webb takes a timeout. This timeout brought to you by Patterson's Appliance is your small town appliance specialist with big box pricing and a fully stocked warehouse. game of the week. This game is phenomenal. The 105th meeting between Harriman and Rockwood, the longest running consecutive rivalry in the whole state of Tennessee. Rockwood leads it 37-36. A final score, West defeats Anderson County 8-7. So we're not the only good game in the no. area this Friday evening. Big fourth down here. Cam Anderson takes a snap. He rolls to his right. He's got some time, now he's under pressure. Throws this up for grabs, and that ball is knocked up into the air and knocked down. Turnover on downs. Wow. Rockwood is gonna be able to take over. On this Chuck Fleischman replay, watch the end of this play. It bounced off of the receiver's helmet and then smartly, Peyton Presley for Rockwood smacks the ball down. Spikes it like in volleyball. Comes up for the spike. Boom. He said, I'm not giving this ball any chance to be tipped again. And R.J. Jones was the receiver whose dome uh -oh. caught that helmet. He and broke. now Rockwood might go yard. They got him. And that is Peyton Presley. And I tell you what, if you're Harriman there, you might just let him go. But Presley, it looks like, now Presley might have been tired, but he might have also slowed up right there. Yeah. Because if, if Rockwood scores, then Harriman's almost guaranteed to get the ball back. But if Rockwood doesn't score, they can run this clock out. And Harriman is out of timeout, so they cannot stop the clock. And I've, I've, I'm not doing the quick math to figure this out, see how close they are. But I do know that Hicks took that snap with about 10 seconds on the play clock. Now you got 40 up there. I think you snap it two more times and you're out of here. The game clock is now running. Yeah, I think, I think this one is over. I don't think Rockwood has to do anything else. What a game. And the big difference in this one. The two penalties on the extra point tries that allowed Rockwood to line up and go for two twice and make it. Yeah, you know, you, you ever just want to say one play, but those were big plays. Hicks, handoff. That is a first down. That'll end it. And a flag comes out late. Now, I believe this is going to be on Harriman, but if it's not, then that first down didn't necessarily seal it. Wow. The bleachers are rocking, guys. It, and it is on Rockwood. It's a block in the back. An unnecessary block in the back. Because that, that play that flag was thrown so late in the play. See if we can see it on the Chuck Flashman replay. Boy, there's not much there at all. 
but that makes it second down. So this game is essentially over. All Rockwood has to do is field the snap cleanly. You also and snap take it one more time. That's it. Now, that being said, <laughs> they have fumbled on the snap at least twice tonight. They're in a victory formation there. So. Hicks snaps it, takes the knee. This one is over. What a game. Rockwood keeps this streak alive. Harriman has not defeated them since going back. You got to go back to 2016. Are they going to snap it one more time? They don't have to. Oh, John called a timeout. Coach Webb called a timeout. I'm confused. But, yeah, it looks like Coach Webb called a timeout. He's upset about something. Yeah, they, he's coaching. You know, he's, he's got the game in hand, but he's still out there coaching, correcting, trying to get them ready because you're going to build on this game for next week. Yeah. Or actually, no, they're open next week, but for the week after. And we'll let you know, this time out brought to you by Patterson's Appliances, and you can save on scratch and dent appliances at the Rockwood Outlet Store, which isn't uh, too far from here. All right, so now, because of that timeout, Hicks will have to field it cleanly one more time. He does, and now he takes a knee. And now, this, be do it. this game is over. The 105th meeting goes to Rockwood. The Tigers are walking out of here with a 37-36 win over Harriman. One of the best games you can ever wish to have. Who would have thought before this game started that we would have more offense than Anderson County and West? Not me. Who'd, who'd have thought that? Not me. Well, you know, and West, two of their points came on a safety. Exactly. <laughs> so that wasn't even offense. Gracious. What a game. The longest running rivalry, consecutive rivalry in Tennessee. And this game goes to Rockwood. And Harriman suffers another heartbreaker. Looking back on it, Harriman has Harriman lost to Wartburg by three points. Harriman lost to Oakdale by two points. Harriman lost to Oliver Springs by one point. And now Harriman loses to Rockwood by one point. And three of those opponents are region opponents. So at the end of the season, if Harriman doesn't make the playoffs, and right now it's looking like they're not going to make the playoffs, you have three games in your region where you lost by less than two points. Yeah. That is heartbreaking for Coach Travis Tapp and those Blue Devils. But, man, uh, Grayson Christ, a junior, so he'll be back next year. Cameron Anderson, a sophomore, so he'll be back next year. And I think you got to like what you see if you're a Harriman fan. Huge, huge improvements. Um, where they started this season. And we'll let you know, the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard Show is next with David Queener and Jonathan Cox. And, buddy, it's going to be a good one. Just listen to it. Call in. Let everybody know where you were. If you were here, call in. Let them know. This, is, this has been so much fun. Well, do you have any final thoughts? Well, I just, you know, there's no quit in either of these teams tonight. There were ample opportunities for each team to kind of lay down and let the other team take control, and you never saw that tonight. Both teams fought very hard. This game meant a lot to both sides, and, and Rockwood came out with the win tonight. So Yeah, and we're talking about how heartbreaking this is for Harriman. The Blue Devils, uh, Rockwood scored five touchdowns. Harriman scored six touchdowns, and Harriman still loses by one point. By one point. Wow. 
Special teams, man. Yeah. Special teams. It makes a big difference. So we invite you now. Stay tuned for the Friday night, uh, the free medical clinic Friday night scoreboard show. I want to thank all of our sponsors, uh, including for tonight's game. And we can't do this without our sponsors. So we are very happy to have all of you on board, especially uh, for tonight's game, the city of Rockwood. Uh, I want to thank May uh, Mayor Jason Jolly and the Rockwood Council members, one of those including a member of this Rockwood coaching staff, Coach Larry Davis, uh, but also including Steve Bryant, Peggy Evans, April Faust-Wilson, Mike Fuller, Mike Reed. They are going to be very, very happy after tonight's win, and Rockwood is positioning itself to possibly uh, get a home game in the playoffs. The Tigers still have to play uh, Oliver Springs and Coalfield, and I assume those, those matchups are going to be pretty fun as well later on in this season. So we'll have that rockwood Coalfield game when it takes place, so very excited about that. So again, inviting you to stay on for the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard Show for Brad Jones, Coach, and Dr. Dan Shoemaker. I'm Aaron Harvey. Whew, good night, folks. At OEB Law, our home is your home. And your family is our family. And down here, family takes care of family. Giving back and helping out whenever needed. OEB Law is proud to be from East Tennessee. OEB Law feels like home. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. To the Friday Night Scoreboard, the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard. I'm David Quinter, Jonathan Cox. I'll be here momentarily. Uh, he's on his way, so uh, we'll get this thing kicked off week eight. Man, this thing's flying by really quick. I mean, uh, you know, it won't be but just a few more weeks. We'll be talking playoffs, and, you know, the playoff picture tonight got a lot clearer for a lot of teams, so uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that when Cox gets here in, in just a little bit. Uh, if you're in the area, uh, I know that Oak Ridge won tonight. I know Clinton got beat tonight. I know AC got beat tonight. Uh, I think I know Cofield won tonight. I'm not, I'm not 100 percent sure on Oliver Springs yet. It's not done yet, but I think they're leading in that game. I've had the 22 to eight. It's the last score we had, so they are leading in that game. Uh, kind of think it's something. Oakdale, Watberg, 22-21. Just trying to thank you if there's anybody else in the area that uh, that we have a lot of callers about. Uh, <coughs> Kingston wins tonight over Austin East. Uh, it's an Austin East team. I think it's winless. Oneida wins. I know there's a few people that keeps up with Oneida. Oneida beats Teleco Plains tonight. Uh, let's see. Uh, that's about it, but... Some of the big games, I understand, is a defensive battle up AC tonight. Eight, seven game of safety. A safety one wins that game up there tonight at uh, 
and Anderson County with Anderson County and West. And Lenore City folks beats Clinton tonight and don't even score an offensive touchdown. Clinton has four turnovers and off of four turnovers, Lenore City scored 14 points and Clinton, nothing. Late, late, scored a late touchdown and and then a turnover to end the game, pretty much just turned the ball back over to the North City. So Clinton loses that home field advantage in the playoffs. They'll be for sure on the road now. Now it's just can they beat Carnes to decide. Uh, I, I think Campbell County did win that game tonight against Carnes. So that should put Clinton third, not less Carnes beats Clinton. And then it'll probably come down to a tie between them and Campbell County. And Clinton should win the tie on the heads up, I think. That's right. So we'll we'll see. But like I said, uh, that's the that's just a quick rundown of what's happening tonight, just right here locally. Uh, man, there's a lot of teams uh, next week uh, have got their buys. I think across the state of Tennessee next week, there's 201 teams that have buys next week. So I don't really know uh, what that does to us. I know Clinton's off. Uh, I'm, and Anderson County, I assume, is off. I'm not 100% sure uh, if they have a football game or not, but I know Clinton is off next week. So that's going to, a lot of kids will be out on fall break. Clinton will be, and they have an off week. So, uh, uh, like I said, we've got a lot of teams off next week. There'll be 201. Tennessee's off tomorrow. They don't play until next Saturday. They take Texas A&M. We'll touch briefly tonight uh, with uh, me and Cox. We'll talk just briefly about Tennessee from last week and maybe just a little bit with Texas A&M coming up. Tennessee has a tough stretch coming up, a real tough stretch coming up. So uh, we'll we'll maybe talk a little bit about that. But our number here is 483-8112. Give us a call, and uh, we'd like to hear uh, if you were at the AC game. You probably not got home yet, but if you're coming in just now and you're at the game and there's something you want to talk about, give us a call. Uh, Oak Ridge, same way. Uh, Clinton, same way. Probably not home for Clinton in Lower City yet, but if anybody's got anything, give us a call. Big game tonight. Like I said, Rockwood and Harriman, one of the oldest rivalries in the state of Tennessee. Rockwood wins that. I don't think, I thought I heard their guys say tonight that Harriman's not won that game since 2016, or 2016, I believe is what he said. So it's been a few years since uh, since Harriman's won that game. But man, you talk about the one or two point losses that Harriman's had this year. There's a bunch. I mean, they've lost this one by one, this one by two, this one by one, lost tonight by uh, one. So, you know, just tough year for Hammerman. I mean, just losing those really close ball games, just can't get over the hump. I think they scored more points tonight, and they scored maybe in, in a couple years over 22. They had 36 tonight. So, you know, Hammerman didn't look real bad tonight, just to be honest with you. Uh, I thought they had a, you know, had a pretty good product out there tonight, and uh, they always play hard for Coach Taff. I don't care what their record is. They didn't play like a 1-17 tonight, so and I'm sure if we had Coach John Webb on here, he'd tell us Hammerman gave them everything they wanted tonight, everything. I mean, uh, so uh, congratulations to Rockwood, and uh, we'll, we'll, move th we'll, move it on. we'll move it on from that, so we'll see. I think Rockwood still got Cofield, and I heard him say who else tonight they had left, but that Cofield game would be a that Cofield game would be a, a big game. So, uh, and I believe that's a TV game for us. I think Cofield and Rockwood. So, and I think Oliver Springs has still got Cofield coming up here in the next uh, week or two. So uh, that'll be a big game, and I think we've got that game too. So, uh, those will be some big ball games coming down the pike right here on Channel 12. We'll end the season up on a boom anyway from those for those games. So. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm I just don't I'm I'm buffaloed with Clinton right now. I mean, I don't really know. I wish I could tell people what's going on. I really don't know what's going on. Uh, uh, they're just having a hard time right now, whether it's on the offensive side or the defensive side. I mean, Lenore City kept the ball for a long stretch tonight, and Clinton just couldn't get off the field. So when you can't get off the field on third downs and they continue those drive and high. And listen, Lenore City was lining up. I, if the guy's on radio and there's no reason Walt Stair and Jim Hollingsworth would have any reason to say any otherwise than what they said, and even that, I don't think they threw the ball but one time tonight. They didn't even have any wide receivers out. They had them all in like tight ends. And was, it was strictly a running game. It was, it was run the, you know, just run the ball down Clinton's throat and 
uh, you know, ball control. So uh, we'll see. Quick caller, you're on the air. Yeah, the Oliver Springs game just uh, got completed, and they won 22 to 8. 22 to 8. All right, thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, man. So, for you folks that want to know, Oliver Springs wins 22 to 8. It's a big game, uh, a big game for uh, Oliver Springs to to get under their belt, another win, and they're on a roll. They're on a small roll. They're, they're on a small roll themselves right now. So, uh, hey, let's jump out here and take a break. Cox is walking in. We'll get things readjusted here. We'll be ready to go here in just a second. The Free Medical Clinic of Oak Ridge presents New Year's Eve 2024 Countdown. On Sunday, December 31st, 2023 at 9 p.m. to January 1st, 2024 at 1 a.m. Live band, food truck, hot air balloons, sponsored by Tennessee College of Applied Technology, Baird, the City of Oak Ridge, David Coffee, BBB Communications, and Holloway Event Company. Ball drop and fireworks. Come with your friends and family to count down the new year together. Don't miss it. Free to the public. For more information, go to fmcor.org. At Ferris, we want you to get the most out of your time and end each day feeling good. That's why we pioneered exclusive lawnmower suspension technology, allowing for full speed mowing, even over the roughest terrain. Grow your business by getting more done in less time with Ferris. Ferris, work hard, feel good. Not exclusively at independent Ferris dealers. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester. Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. Care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. Onsite Care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, Onsite Care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now, Onsite Care welcomes Darren Wright, a board certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865 285 9588 to schedule an appointment at Onsite Care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors, together we succeed one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. Kathy May Martin has been making real estate dreams a reality for over three decades. Buying or selling real estate is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Choosing the right realtor is next. Thinking of buying or selling? 
Call Kathy May Martin at Coldwell Banker Jim Henry and Associates for all your real estate needs. Rest assured, with Kathy's knowledge and experience, you will be on the winning team. Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Excited for a season full of big hits. Perfect plays. And those nail biting near misses. If you've been injured, OAB Law will come to your defense and tackle any obstacles blocking you from scoring a full and fair settlement. Call OEB Law 865 546 1111 and turn your red into a check. 1952. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Welcome back to the Free Mail Clinic Friday Night Score Award Week 8. Cox, glad you finally decided to join us. I appreciate it. Man, what it, a but football game. What a football game, you say, hey? So, yep. Harris County goes down 8-7. to 8-7. to uh, seven. I think Tony Lambert's probably – I'd say Tony Lambert right now feels like he's got a defense that can play two or three rounds in the playoffs for sure. But that offense – that offense has some – it's got a ways to go. And then West's got a good defense. We were just talking about that. The speed they have on defense. And, but uh, I personally still think West is the best 5A football team on this side of the of Crossville. So, I mean, I think they're the best 5A football team right now here. And I don't, I don't, know, about, I don't know about going that way yeah. yet. I don't know about that way yet. But I think West is one of the best football teams. Anybody that thinks that West is a pushover for them, uh, you're wrong. West is a good football team. Not only that, they got a good coach. So, got a solid coach it, over there. Yeah, it would have been Anderson County's best win of the year. Yeah, it would have been Anderson County's win. I mean, in my opinion, that was the best win. Now, I will say this: West was beat up. They were, they were running both their running backs a little bit tonight. Uh, I actually asked Lamar coming out of the half. I said, "What's going on with two and seven? Because Jesse had asked me when you go see if they're playing. He said, man, they're limited. He said, they're about 60%, 70% right now. Yeah, but that 60 or 70% is better than some kids, 100%. Yeah, and, and two's, a, two's a low, but you can tell when he got going, he couldn't – he just couldn't move. Just couldn't move. Couldn't cut. You know, and early in the year, he looked like a stud. Yeah. I still think you get them, health, you get them healthy, and maybe they'll get healthy. You get them healthy, and, uh, you know, uh, they're still a tough football team. Uh, that defense is so. good. Anderson County's defense played well tonight. Can't take anything away from them. But uh, I was disappointed in the crowd and the atmosphere at AC tonight. There wasn't no crowd? I, I couldn't believe that West nor Anderson County had more people there. That's a big football game. That's two state championship teams playing each other tonight. I guess rain. Maybe rain or a fall break. Could be rain. Yeah, I don't know. I yeah, well, fall break officially starts after today. So, uh, yeah. I guess, you know, maybe everybody left this evening or something like that, and, you know. Yeah, I was and disappointed. When fall break comes, people forget about football and they go on. I guess so. so. You know, you don't – if you got plans, you got plans. So, 
I guess uh, so. But it was, uh, I don't know, I thought it would be packed up there tonight. I thought it would be rocking and rolling. But it was, uh, it was a little down compared to what I thought it was going to be for that. I mean, like I said, you got two defending state championships playing each other, 4A and 5A. Uh, state champs playing each other. But it was, it, anyway, it was a little down. But, uh, man, Halls keeps rolling, don't they? Yeah. I think Gibbs won tonight, too. That's a future opponent of Anderson County. Uh, they beat Carter tonight. Uh, so, uh, Lenore City beat Clinton? Yeah. Sure did. Did Clinton. Did Keith play? Keith played. Oh, Lenore no. City only threw the ball one time. No. And did, listen to this. Did not. Let me say it again so you understand me. They did not score an offensive touchdown tonight. Lenore City then. And they beat Clinton 14-7. Clinton had four turnovers. Clinton didn't score the ball till late. Uh, had the ball driving it. And Keith fumbled it for the fourth turnover. And Clinton got beat. So that At means one on, point. That means they're on the road for the playoffs. Oh, yeah. Campbell County did win tonight. I think they beat Carnes tonight. So that's probably going to put Campbell County in. We'll probably put Clinton third, Campbell County fourth. Yeah. I guess I don't know what the current game, what indication, in, implications it'll have on the on the seed. I don't know yet, uh, but uh, yes. So anyway, Clinton's driving the ball late, gets the ball back with a couple minutes back driving it, and I guess Keith is on a run. He fumbles the ball, and that ends it. Are you game kidding over. me? They didn't score an offensive touchdown. So here's the here's the radio guys talking tonight. The North City comes out with no. Wide receivers, I mean, out wide. All, everything's in tight, like you put all your wide receivers in tight, and they're running the ball, and they're doing trick stuff in the backfield and running the ball, and Clinton can't stop them. They had the, uh, Lenore City held the ball on one drive for almost 10 minutes. That's almost a quarter. That's eating a quarter of it. Another drive, seven minutes. So when you're taking chunks out of the clock like that, no. That's sad. Like, I'm in shock right now that they lost and scored seven points and didn't give up a defensive touchdown. Or they didn't let Lenore City score an offensive touchdown. Yep. So, was it a special teams and a pick six? I, I don't I, didn't, I don't know. I don't know how, I don't know how Lenore City scored. I got in delayed on bo all of it, so I can't tell you. Uh, I just couldn't, couldn't get off the field on third downs against Lenore City. They just, you know, just couldn't get off the field. So, I don't know who you blame it on tonight. Offense turned it over four times. Defense didn't play very well at times. I guess it's a team loss, and you just march on and go on. I, uh, I don't know. You know, I, I think it's going to be a very tough job for Coach Keith uh, to get his kids pumped back up in a couple weeks to to play Carnes because uh, they lost uh, they lost a lot tonight. Clinton's on a four game losing streak. Wow, they've lost four in a row. Are they off this coming week? For off this coming week, man. Listen. High school football next week, there's 201 teams that have breaks next week that are off across the state of Tennessee. 201. Do you think there's, I don't know, you think there's a possibility that becomes, I uh, can't do that, everybody's fall break's different. Thank you, everybody. Well, I can tell you, I know what you're going to say. You think that's a possibility it's going to become a problem? But, yeah. yes, sir, there's talk about that right now. I've heard rumblings about that right now. they got to do something with the, uh, you got to do something about this with fall break and everything. And you may. And here's you know. how you fix that: you make week seven and week eight, or week eight. You know how really, how you want to look at the weeks, region weeks. Yeah, you got to. You got to stop. Got to change. But if I'm a high school football coach, I want the week off. I, I do too, but I also want the week off that I'm gonna be out on fall break. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't want my kids. I don't want to have no school and then have to have football practice too. I agree. Because that is a that would that's just livid. Yeah. You know you're going to have it's just not going to work. I don't know. I don't know what they can do work. about that one. It's going. It's tough. But they've. It's once again. It all falls back to TWSWA with everything else that's going on. It all falls back to TWSWA, man. They don't just. It's out of control. Everything's out of control. Uh, I wish I had the answer because I sure try to tell them, but I don't know what the answer is. I don't even know I how mean, you fix you that at, one. I mean, look at Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge is on fall one. break right now. Two week fall break. Two week, the way their schedule wrote. You're right, but Oak Ridge's bye was week two, so Oak Ridge has already had their bye, so they're playing through 
their fall break, and next week they've got Bearden. Had Farragut tonight and Bearden uh, next Friday night. Mm. So, uh, you know, it's a tough stretch for Oak Ridge. So they play Bearden next week? Yep. I wonder why they play Bearden. That's a non-region game, isn't it? Yep. It is. Oak Ridge is in the region with Clinton and Lenore City and Campbell County and Carnes. I think that's the only teams in that region. Yeah, it's a Bearden game next week. Wow. Yeah. I still cannot believe sitting here that Clinton scored seven points and lost tonight. Short end. They short it. 43 at 112. Give us a call and uh, we will chat with you. And like I said, most, most of the fan bases probably haven't got home yet. So uh, Clinton played at Lenore City. At Lenore City, yeah. Anders King fans are at home. I left as soon as fourth down play was over and I don't know, was that game on TV tonight? Was what? that on Channel 95 tonight on the school I channel? Don't know. You know, I didn't even look. I didn't even look tonight. I can't get Channel 95. I can't get the one that Packer plays. I don't get either channel, so. So, I'm in uh, Dick Sporting Good. Mm, was it Saturday? Can't remember. It don't really matter. The story's what matters. So I'm in Dick's Sporting Good, and I walk by this rack. As soon as I walk by this rack, I think of Cox. I told my wife tonight, I should have bought the hood shirt, because I've got the cowboy hat. And when you come in here tonight, I'd have had my prime time hood shirt on and my cowboy hat on. You've been and ready to go. We've been ready to go, buddy. And I thought about you as soon as I walked by it, and I thought, man, that looks just like Jonathan Cox right there. That hood <laughs> shirt looks just like, I believe it would fit him. Uh, It'd be a perfect fit. But you in Prime's hood shirt. Prime's <laughs> killed it. You asked about the Oliver, you asked about the Harriman Rockwood game. Last time Harriman beat Rockwood was 2016. But listen to this this year, and I don't know how many, I can't tell you the exact number of games I'm going to tell you, but Harriman's lost a couple games by one point. And a couple games by two points this year. And they lose tonight by one. So that's how Harriman's season is rolling. And Harriman didn't look bad tonight. I thought Harriman looked really good with some speed and some good athletes out there. So it's just not winning the close it's games. It's just not winning the close games. Just not able to win the close games. So, uh, So Camel County gets back up and knocks Carnes off. I don't Bearden beats Cleveland 38-20 when Bearden's rolling. Their little uh, sophomore running back had 128 yards rushing through two quarters. He's good. Really good player. And their Division One running back going to produce hurt right now. So the Is he still hurt? Yeah. Sophomore stepped in and he's rolling. Uh, I, when, was, I was in Hampton today, believe it or not. Uh, when will uh, he be back? Do you know see where Greenville won, Elizabeth won tonight too? When is that game, next week? That m maybe. It's it's in the next week or two, yes. I don't know when exactly. Kingston hammered A. Yeah. I don't think A's won a game. Fulton won tonight. Fulton, they're two wins. Yeah, Playoffs. I, they're, on a, they're, they're, on getting, they're getting a one-way ticket to either Elizabeth or Greenville. They're on a winning streak right now, buddy. Maybe they go out and pull the upset. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe Greenville gets the flu that week and get, they don't have enough kids to play. Have forfeit. They something like that. What you think? They're going to be a divine intervention. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, it could happen, couldn't it? it yeah, could. it could. It's not going to, but no. it could. Uh, Tell you, the game of the night tonight was that Knox West AC game. That was a heck of a football game. Man, you're rough. You're just going on with that. Cause East you're, Ridge. I know, you're... You're in them boys' back pocket up there, you and Jesse. <laughs> I think you ought to tell the truth that you and Jesse get state championship rings. I heard you both did. So I don't know who didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I can tell you I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, Jesse's on the line. Ask if he got one. Quick caller, you're on the line. Hey guys, how are y'all? It's Jesse Smithy. Hey Jesse, a question right quick. We've been asked this. Did you get a state championship ring from Anderson County this year? <laughs> no, no, I did not. Well, how did Cox? How did Cox get one and you didn't get one? I don't know. I mean, he he he's from that area, so I don't know what kind of strings he pulled. But you know, we did not get any championship. Well, I only asked you that question because he told me to ask. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, buddy? How is it tonight? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously we've had a little bit of weather, and that can certainly change the complexion of the game and, uh, and deter some teams from throwing the football. But uh, tonight I got to watch Bearden High School beat Cleveland, a really good Cleveland team that came to Knoxville about a month ago or so and, and really stuck it to a, a fair good team that Bearden struggled to, to beat. So we watched uh, Bearden run the football effectively tonight. They're still not 100% personnel-wise, but... Uh, we're able to, to make the plays and, and swing the momentum with a huge kickoff return by Tory Beaufort and then the running of Jay Zon Thompson who's just been steady and productive all season long. Hey Jesse, uh, what was the atmosphere like over there tonight? I was I was at the Anderson County game and I was disappointed in the atmosphere in the crowd tonight. Yeah, probably, it's probably about the same, a little subdued. I don't know if the weather had a lot of part of that. Uh, it's also the start of fall break around the area as well, so some people are leaving town and, and heading out to whatever trip that they have planned. So, yeah, the, the attendance or student section, things like that, were a little little down compared to previous weeks, but I'm sure, again, weather, fall break has much to do with that. Oak Ridge beats Farragut 35-3. to Is that correct? That's correct. That's correct. And yeah, Farragut struggled, I think, with three tur turnovers tonight, threw two interceptions, had a fumble, and, and Oak Ridge is just kind of peaking right now. Look, this Farragut team um, kind of peaked early on. I mean, they're in the first couple of weeks of the season. They won some games in dramatic fashion, but this schedule that they have is just absolutely brutal, and I think it's just wearing them down week by week. And, um, yeah, they're going to have to pull off a win over a Maryville or something like that to even make the playoff. Jesse, what did you think about the Lenore City-Clinton game tonight and how Lenore City won the game? Well, I haven't seen, been able to find much information on that yet. Night's still young for me, and I haven't seen any stats or, or box scores or anything like that. But uh, there's no secret what Lenore City does. They they run on the legs of Trey Wilhite, a senior kind of all-purpose back who starts for them on offense and defense. And this is a Lenore City, uh, I think offense is just is a bad matchup for Clinton. I mean, I think they beat them last year too, right? Yeah, that's correct. The running back you're talking about, the all-purpose player got hurt, didn't? I don't think he played in the second half. If I'm uh, right in what radio said tonight, Lenore City did not score an offensive touchdown. That's, I mean, it's, it's shocking to see. I mean, honestly, uh, again, I don't, I don't have all the particulars or information in it, but. I mean, the North City's given them trouble before, and it looks like they, you know they they got them again tonight. Yeah, four turnovers for Clinton too didn't help. So uh, mm, no, mm. you can't can't do that. On no, the road. can't do it. Yeah. So with a Farragut, Maryville winner go to the playoffs, and the loser miss the playoffs. I mean, the last time I looked, Jonathan, that seems to be the case. I think Maryville might have <laughs> another region game that they have to play coming up, um, but basically. You're looking at, yeah, Maryville still got to play Cleveland next week. That's a really good Cleveland team. But I still think that game in the in week 11 against Farragut will be for a playoff spot. And, guys, I mean, can can you imagine Maryville losing that game and missing out on the playoffs? They haven't missed the playoffs since 1996. And, again, it just seems like every week we're checking off a new box, some end of some long streak or something that hasn't happened in – however many decades with this Maryville program and it's just it's still odd to see I'm gonna bet I'm gonna bet Maryville wins the game so I'll, I'll is, Cle is Cleveland is Cleveland in the region Jesse what's that is Cleveland in their region yes they are in the region so it's, it's basically right now you're looking at Bradley Central and Beard and uh, they'll be playing for the one seed in the final week of the season then you got Cleveland kind of taking up that third spot and uh, then, and then you got Maribel and Farragut right there, kind of vying for number four. But, wow! You know, if Maribel, if Maribel beats Cleveland and they beat Farragut, you're looking at Maribel as a three seed and uh, Cleveland as a four. But man, I just I watched Cleveland tonight. Cleveland tonight, they got a ton of athletes. I think maybe better weather conditions, they could have thrown the ball a little bit better. Uh, so it's going to be a difficult game for Maribel next week. So you're saying that the transfer portal was good to Cleveland? I did not say that. I'm just saying that they look athletic this year. <laughs> I don't remember them looking that athletic last year. Oh, <laughs> no. Um, hey, take us through something real quick. You, 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 you said a little something, I think, on social or maybe on the five-star about 
how many teams are off next week. Is there any way to fix that? Does TWS play have any control over that situation? Uh, what do you talk a little bit about that, and then we'll get back to football real quick. Well, they seem to have a lot of control when there's a, an official shortage, right? And they started moving games around and this, that, and the other to Thursdays. And, and now there's going to be a lot of officials around the state probably sitting on their hands next week. There are 201 teams in Week 9 not playing. This is the most it's supposed to be the most exciting month of the season. There are 11 weeks of the regular season. We're in Week 9, and half the teams in the state or more are not playing. And I look, I, it may be some freak thing in the schedule this year where so many school systems have a fall break at the same time, and it just, it just, again, maybe it's some anomaly, but it, gosh, it just, you look at next week's schedule on PWS and A, and you see so many buys, you just keep scrolling, 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 and you go, you know, this just isn't right. I mean, this is supposed to be the most exciting time of the year, locking up playoff spots, and I have no doubt. Week 10 and week 11 will be exciting. But, man, it's just – it's kind of a dud when you look at the schedule next week. There's a couple of good games on there. Don't get me wrong. Beard and Oak Ridge, uh, Lipscomb Academy comes to Catholic. And, and we'll make do. Don't get me wrong. But it's just – I don't know. It, it leaves a lot to be desired, and I was shocked to see that many teams off next week. Yeah, I, I agree. We talked about it. I, we don't know what the fix is, but it's just uh... – Something needs to happen. So Elizabeth and Greenville do not play each other next week. That's the following week? Correct. Yeah, I believe Northview Academy. Maybe Northview Academy plays Elizabeth next Elizabeth week. And got, or Elizabeth and beat Northview tonight. Okay, that was tonight. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, those two, uh, we, we know they're always kind of on a collision course in Region 1, 4A, and Greenville just absolutely put it on. Granger tonight. you got to feel like after all the schedule difficulties and rainouts and weather delays, Greenville's starting to peak a little bit. And uh, that certainly, I know Eddie Spradlin's a friend of the program and friend of Five Star Preps, and I'm sure he's happy to see his team kind of rolling along right now heading into that game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I did hear tonight that Union County and Scott County, that game was in overtime, that 22-20 score, Union beat Scott. That was for a playoff berth. That was for a playoff berth? That was for a playoff berth. Well, congratulations to Union County, yeah. man. <laughs> I heard that tonight on the sidelines listening to Jordan Jeffers, the Interest Game basketball coach. He's a Scott County guy. Jesse, was there any really shocking score tonight? Did, did, did the West Anderson County, did you pick West to win that football game on your picks? Yeah, I, yeah, I picked West to win a like a 22 to 15 type of game. I thought it'd be low scoring. I didn't think it'd be that low scoring. But again, the question mark all along last week against Alcoa and this week against Anderson County is when would West kind of release Marshawn Bowers? And again, bigger picture here, the game against Alcoa, the game against Anderson County don't matter. They won another 5A championship. These were non-region games against different classification teams. But they're still marquee matchups, and you want to see your best players out there if they can go in these big-time matchups against Alcoa and Anderson County. And it sounds like they finally kind of – they finally started to let Marshawn Bowers play a little bit as the game wore on. And, of course, he had a big touchdown uh, there in the second half, I believe I saw. So – um, wasn't a pretty game from what I could gather, from what I could see. Uh, when I got home, I turned it on. It sounded like there were some, maybe some turnovers, penalties, and whatnot that are kind of atypical for both teams. But, um, yeah, that was a just kind of a grinded out win. Both teams you know, aren't, aren't going to hang their head about it, and uh, they'll move on and, and you know, attack their respective playoff brackets. Yeah, the, a big, big call that scored – uh, Bowers touchdown. They run a little swing pass, and he, a kid comes up and tackles him low. Tanner's got a very good video of it. It's hard to tell if he's okay. down on the play. That left elbow. Uh, he mm -hmm. comes up. He then runs it in for a touchdown on that play. Uh, so, according to what side you're on, which you know what video you're watching there, to, if he's down or not, but. Uh, uh, there was a couple TV guys standing over there beside me, and I guess since I, I got your sweatshirt on, they wanted to show me the play. And, man, it was – it it it's hard to tell. But uh, that's two times Anderson County's been, you know, 
they feel like they've got the wrong end of the deal on a call against Science Hill and then the wrong end of the deal. I've seen the video. Right I've seen the video. You can't tell. It's really hard to tell. In lifetime, I don't know how the official I, can I make know the neither. call. Either way he goes. So, but uh, it was a defensive battle. Both defenses played well. And uh, it was a struggle for the offense on both sides of the ball. Yeah, but again, at the end of the day, we talked about Anderson County earlier in the year and when they were dropping two or three straight and everybody was wondering what was going on. I think we're seeing right now kind of what they can be toughness-wise, ability-wise against top-flight programs. And they're going to be in the mix in 4A yet again this, this postseason. have no doubt about it. Yeah. Jesse, go about web a little bit because, you know, we got some people that watch from the web and the grace uh, areas. Is web a, a contender to win a state championship this year? I, I think they can get there. Uh, we're going to know a little bit more in about two weeks. They will take on Boyd Buchanan and Gary Rankin, and that game will basically be for a region championship. So in this area, this part of the state, it's those two teams. And so we'll really, we'll really get a true test because Webb hasn't really played the most difficult of schedules. And I, I'm not trying to slice Grace Christian in the, in the least or CAK or you know, some of the other teams that they play, but we're really going to get a test of how good Webb can be against a legendary coach with a, a really good lineup against Boyd Buchanan here in week 10, I believe. Uh, so, yep, yeah, I still believe that they are talented enough, they're well coached enough to get to that state championship game. Haven't really been able to map out the Division II AA bracket. Of course, it's good that Lipscomb Academy is lo no longer there. They're in AAA, but uh, they're definitely a contender, one of your top three or four teams in the mix in that conversation when you talk about teams that could possibly win a state championship. And I mean, they had that game locked up in no time tonight against Grace Christian. Yep. And they'll move on and start preparing for Boyd Buchanan, which had a big win on the road at Lakeway tonight. So next week, game of the week is Beard and Oak Ridge. I mean, is there anything else around that kind of catches your attention? Do you have Maryville, do you have Maryville Cleveland next week? You got Beard and Oak Ridge. Uh, that's definitely probably the local game of, of, the, uh, of the week. You got Maryville at Cleveland. Uh, that'll be a, a key region game. You got Jefferson County at Farragut on Thursday. Shout out Jefferson County. I think I saw that they won their first outright district or region championship since 1994. So I know things have kind of come close at times for, to, to pop for, for Spencer Riley up there, and he's finally having a, a big year for Jefferson County, and they're just trying to get their first playoff win in a couple of decades too. So we'll see if they can check that off the list. You got Lipscomb Academy, some Tennessee commits on there, I'm sure, some college football prospects coming to Knoxville to play Catholic. And, um, yeah, that's about it. Bearded Oak Ridge and not much else on, on the docket in terms of just that, that kind of attractive matchup that you would get excited about. But uh, we'll find a way to make it work. I do want to give, before I go, shout-out to Kingston tonight. That is an Austin East team that can put up some stats, yes. some numbers, a lot of touchdowns, a lot of people's defenses have struggled containing Shane Cherry, the quarterback at Austin East. Kingston limited them to about 150 yards of total offense tonight. Shane Cherry wow. had negative yards rushing, and it was like 9 of 22 passing. And Kingston just whipped them 60 or, what, 51 to 5 or something, or 51 to 6. I can't remember what the final yeah, you're right. was. But yeah, it was a blowout. And I thought that was, that was a game that I really struggled with, picks-wise. I thought... Shane Terry might give them some problems and running around and just make plays on the fly all night. And Kingston kept him hemmed up all night and it just dominated. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you go back to going on back, every Blunt County school, I think, this week was off. Was off, yeah. In the schedule. I'd heard that. Might have been from Jesse earlier. But uh, anyway, hey, man, thank you. I know you got a busy night ahead of you. Always good catching up. Um, Next week, we'll see if we can uh, maybe in the, in the future get this panned out where we're playing the exciting football week eight, nine, and ten. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if we can make that work somehow. We need we need to get it going. Thanks, Jess. You we'll see you next power. week, man. You got those games started at seven o'clock, so now we can see if we can get week eight, nine, and ten. <laughs> That's right. We'll see if we can get a movement going. <laughs> see you, bud. See you. All right. Quick call. Are you on the air? Hey, right, hey guys. Hey, what buddy. Say? Yeah, I was getting home from the Clinton game. I'll give you guys a call. Been listening to the show. Is it true that I, is it true Lenore City did not score an offensive touchdown? Yeah, that's true. Wow. 
You ever had a, wow. a pick six? I didn't see that. I got there a little late. And then we had a punt. Uh, Snap over the punter's head in the end zone. They recovered it. I tried. That's how they did score that second touchdown. You're right. I heard that on the radio. Yeah. Well, I thought our defense, I, you know, I heard you talking about our defense not getting off the field. I thought we got off the field enough to win that game. Um, I can only I can only repeat, John, what the guys on the radio said. They said there was a 10-minute drive and a 7-minute drive, and that eats a lot of clock up right there when you take your 10 minutes out of a quarter. Yeah, that's what the North City does. You know? Oh, yeah, it is. Hey, I don't think they, I don't think the North City threw the ball but one time tonight, maybe. Right, and that was a – they got a first down on like the fourth and short. Yeah, they just run the ball. They just run the ball at Clinton tonight, and Clinton couldn't – Clinton didn't – couldn't stop them at points, so that's a problem. Clinton's had that problem all year long. You know, on that pass completion, was they lined up in punt formation, they snapped it to the up back, and he threw a little pass to the tight end. Yeah, that's tied what open. that's what they do. Run a bunch of trick plays. That's how they that's how they've won their games. I mean, you know, no wide receivers. Everybody's lined up tight. Only playing three down linemen on defense and three linebackers, and having five defensive backs. So. You know, that didn't play into Clinton's hand there as far as throwing the ball on some on some stuff. So, you know, it's a equal you know, it's a loss it's a team loss, whether it's a defensive team loss or an offensive. Turn the ball over four times, you're probably gonna get beat every Friday night. Yeah, I thought we was making a good comeback there at the end. I did I did too. I thought Clinton was gonna score back. tied up, John. I really did. I thought they were gonna tie that ball game up with just seconds probably left on the clock, they would tie it up and it was going to overtime. Yeah, there was about a minute, a little under a minute, I think. We got on the 15-yard line, but I was hoping to go into overtime. But it's just a disappointing loss. It's a bad loss. It really is. It's a, any, not any loss is good, but that's a really bad loss for Clinton. It knocked us out of a home playoff game. and You know, it's been since 2009 since we had a home playoff game when we lost to Anderson County. That's correct. You're right. So Clinton needs to take this week off and rebound to get ready for a couple weeks from now against, Car I believe it's Carnes. You need to win that game bad. I mean, just to break the four-game losing streak they're on because they're on a four-game losing streak, and they need to win the following week and go out on a little winning note. And yeah, you never know what happens then when you get in the playoffs. It's sad to me that, you know, I've, I've sat here seven, eight weeks, whatever, how I many times we've been here. It's the eighth week. Yeah, and it's sad to me that every week that Clinton loses, it's turnovers, penalties, and special teams. I mean, it's just a reoccurring. It is. Oh, no, it, it's been that way all year. You know, I mean, we were calling for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I called for five minutes or a year just to practice defending the onside the kick. The onside kick. <laughs> You know, we couldn't and, even do that. But you know, and then tonight you got a, a snap over the head for a touchdown. Yep. You know, see, so I mean, between special teams penalties and turnovers, they've probably cost themselves two two football games. Probably. Two football yeah, games. Yeah, that was. Uh, well, defense played well enough to win. Offense just they stunk it up tonight for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't, he probably wasn't 100 percent, but and we just couldn't get nothing going. Uh, we tried to run the ball a little bit more than we have, and had not much success there. We just couldn't get nothing going, and we recovered a fumbled punt one time, so that led to our first score. So the Wesley Phillips played a real good game. We was going to him down the stretch, big six-six receiver. And him and Keith made some good connections, and uh, Joshua, he scrambled for some big plays, too. We was coming back. We just, you know, come up short again. But, you know, talking about the playoffs, you know, we got to beat Carnes to get in, and then that would give us third. And I think I saw where East Hamilton beat Walker Valley tonight. Yes. I think that shakes up that region maybe a little bit. Um, I thought McMinn County and Walker Valley were the top two teams down there, but 
East Hamilton winning tonight, you know, Clinton could possibly, if we finish third, we could be going to East Hamilton. And I think that's a great place to go. It's not too far. It's a brand new campus. It's, I, I think that would be a good place for you all to uh, travel to week one of the playoffs. But if Clinton don't figure out special teams, taking care of the football and penalties, it don't matter who you play. It don't matter who you play. That's just simple. That's simple focus and discipline on how to play a sport. I mean – you know, a turnover is a turnover. Yeah. You know, no matter what sport you're playing, that's just lack of focus and discipline on what you're doing. Yeah, you're not going to last too long in the playoffs like that, are you? Nope. No. Yeah. And the quarterback's a heck of a football player. But, man, I watch him play, and it's like he's just out there trying to survive. <laughs> he is. I don't know how, how, how he played tonight, just to be honest with you. Was his ribs or what, what was the – I don't know if anybody ever really know, ever okay. knows what the symptoms were. That poor kid. I think it was ribs, I think so. But yeah. He was running around out there playing pretty tough tonight, you know. I'm say I probably not 100%. But just, I from, just from listening to the guys on the radio, took another couple big licks again tonight from just from what they said. So I'm only going off what the guys on the radio oh, yeah. said tonight. Took a couple another hard hits tonight. Got up because they didn't know if he'd get up. He got up and went, kept on trying. So there's one thing about the kid. Tough. He's tough. tough. He's tough as well. Oh, yeah. He's tough as well. Oh, yeah. We, we got to have him in there to, to win, you know. And uh, North City just, they was fired up tonight. It was their homecoming. I don't know if it's homecoming or senior night. It was their last game, I guess, at home. I don't know, sure, but they were fired up. And, Big win for them. It's hard to believe it's already senior night. Season's about over, uh, boys. This thing will be over with here before you know it. We're out, we're out of here. I mean, it'll be over with. We'll be in the playoffs. So yeah, John, you watch oh, yeah. a lot. Of, you watch a lot of football, and we've said this a couple times on air. Name a team around our coverage area. When I say our coverage area, five-star coverage area. Of all the counties that we cover, the schools we cover, name a team that is better right now than they were last year at this time. Oak Ridge? Well, Can you say oh, it? Definitely Oak, Oak Ridge? Well, definitely Oak, Oak Ridge, yeah. And Maybe Bearden? Halls, no Halls. Is halls. Two. So, three. I mean, I, I just, you know, it's, it's a weird year of football. It is. Like, I went and watched two defending state champions play tonight, and neither one of those teams are on the level they were on last year. Neither one of them. Right. And they're good. I'm not saying that, but they're just not on the same level when you watch those when you watch those football games. You know, it's yeah. it's a weird year for football. Yeah, it seems like some of the – well, not all of them, but all the top teams that took us – a notch back, you know. You mentioned Oak Ridge, and they're one of the better teams. You know, there's some other teams. You know, Morristown West, they look like they're improved a lot. They should have won that game last night. And Who'd they play last night? Severe. Uh, Severe County. County. Morristown West last night? It's a good win for the Severe County guys. They lost in overtime. Yeah. It's, an inter it's just an odd year of football. It's, it's I, it, I don't know what's affecting the 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 teams and stuff. I don't know if it's I don't know if players aren't playing or everybody's focused on one sport this day and time. They're not playing oh, no. more sports or private schools are depleting some schools. What was the, what was the foul final tonight? Forty-one to seven. They're wow. playing well. Huh? I really like them when I watch them play. Their defense is so fast. That'd, that'd be a real good matchup, them and Oak Ridge, possibly. Uh, they're, yeah, they play next week. You know, John, I don't know if you heard Jesse or not. You know there's a chance Maryville might miss the playoffs? Who, Maryville? Yep. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize that. Bearden and Bra uh, Beard and Bradley County's got uh, they've got the first and the second seed locked up. Cleveland, Maryville, and 
fair to all play each other yep. the last couple weeks of the season. And if Bearden don't – or if uh, Maryville don't win one of those two games, they're, they're they're, out. they'll miss the playoffs 13 since 1996. Yeah, I think that's what he said, 1996. And they got Farragut and who else? Cleveland. Cleveland. Farragut and Cleveland left. Cleveland uh -huh. next week and then Farragut the uh, last game of the year. Yeah. I expect Maryville to get in. Yeah, they'll get – yeah, I wouldn't bet against them. Both, yeah, freshman games. quarterback. Yeah, that's true. Freshman quarterback. So. You say Town Oak Ridge play next week? No, Bearden Oak Ridge. Bearden Oak Ridge week. next week. Oh, Bearden Oak Ridge. Oh, that'd be a good one. Yeah, that'd be a good ball. That'd be a good ball game. Yeah, it will. All right, guys. I appreciate it. Let y'all go there. All right, see you, John. Thank you, man. Yeah. Quick call. Are you on the air? Man, uh, another sad day in the land of the dragon. What's going on? I don't know. All I hear is radio. <laughs> yeah, another sad day in the land of the dragon. So, in all seriousness, what is the deal with Clinton? It's not like they have bums on the team. They've got talent. They've got Maryville kids, season one prospect. They've got some transfers from some Blount County schools. I mean, what's going on? What do you think's going on? You're a bigger Clinton fan than we are. Yeah. Now, you're an Anderson County and Fulton fan. I'm not an Anderson County fan. I just went up there tonight because I thought it was going to be one of the best games in the area, and it was probably the best game in the area outside of Harriman so Rockwood. We, yeah, we, what's going on? With who? With Clinton. I mean, seriously. I, I like to rag on Clinton. I love it, but you got to you got to ask the question: What's going on? They have. It's not like they have bums. They've got some guys. They've got horses. But something's not not clicking. You have to ask somebody besides these two guys. Because hmm. I'm gonna tell you, if I knew what it was, I'd make a phone call first thing in the morning to the head coach. First thing in the morning. Might not even wait till then. Think? Might not wait till then. I might make it at the next commercial break. I ain't got a clue what's going on. I've not seen Clinton play in the last three or four years. So I couldn't tell you. You know, it's uh, it's kind of a weird ending when uh, it was kind of a similar ending to last year with Lenore City because Keith unfortunately fumbled at the one-yard line, and that was the last play of the year, or excuse me, of the game. And now this time he, it sounded like he fumbled again when they were driving at the five-yard line. So, I mean, that, that really sucks, and that's not on him. I believe it's on coaching. So, I mean, last I heard, Keith is not the one that's calling the plays on the offense. I think there's another assistant coach from Oak Ridge that may be calling the shot on offense. That's wrong. There is not. There's a Clinton, yeah. guy, there's a Clinton guy that calls the plays. He's never been an Oak Ridge guy. No, he's not an Oak Ridge guy. He actually coached at Grace, didn't he? Uh, he probably, yeah, I think he did for a little while. Yeah. How long has he been in Clinton? <laughs> Ever since Keith's been there, maybe okay. a little bit before. Now, there's a Clinton guy that's offensive coordinator. Jason Hammock's offensive coordinator. Is there a way to fix this? Is there a what? Is there a way to fix this? I I don't know what do you fix. I'm mean, out of what you fix. I mean, there's so many things, I think. Turnovers, I mean, penalties, turnovers, special teams. Turnovers, penalties, special teams, tackling, blocking. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can pinpoint all through the year that Clinton's not done very well, whether it's, you know, blocking or tackling or whether it's been the penalties at the first of the year, which has seemed to have got them sort of under control a little bit, and it's the rash of turnovers. But, you know, I was told once when you have to throw the ball a lot, bad things happen, and those bad things are interceptions, and that's just part of the game when you're tossing the ball. You're going to have interceptions, and there's going to be bad things happen. So, well, I mean, I don't know. Would you guys? I mean, I mean, you pretty much said there's not. Sounds like there's not really a quick fix. And you know, we've been hearing for the last five weeks. Well, they need to figure it out and figure it out. At what point you just like there's nothing to figure out. Just who they are at the point. I mean, because they're graduating a lot of talent. Now, I think you yeah, are. I think you are what you are right now. You. This is what you got going down the, straight, the last couple of games here and into the playoffs. So you gotta. You just ride what you got and hopefully. It'll correct itself. Hopefully, they'll. They've not really played a complete football game since Campbell County. My opinion, just my opinion. Okay, 
They, they've played well in some games for a half, but they've not played a complete football game since Campbell County, in my opinion. Are they uh, are they in the playoffs with that Campbell County win, or do they have to win against Connor? Well, they beat Campbell County. I think they're in. Hmm. Maybe not. Interesting. So, I think Carnes is the one that's I don't think no matter – it doesn't really matter. I don't think what Carnes does. I don't I don't think it does, but I know it could. I don't I don't really know. At this point, I don't really care neither. So, you know, Clinton needs to win. That's, that's what they need to do is just take care of business and win. And then there's no questions and no talk about it or anything. But, you know, I don't know. Clinton's lost four in a row, and, you know, they've been some thumpings in there. And who do they play after cards? Heritage, I believe. I believe that's right. I think you're right. All right. So you got a chance it could go out and win a, you know, win a couple more <laughs> right here. I, you know, I, I, I don't well, know. I mean, I mean, the offseason is coming, so maybe they can learn a thing or two from Bearden on doing better in recruiting. Doing better in recruiting. I guess. I don't who know. Is, what, maybe they could do a better job recruiting. I, I don't Clinton. I don't know if Clinton's recruiting or not. I don't know who's and recruiting and who's oh, not. One, oh, oh, 100%. Oh, there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. I, I mean, I, well, okay, you know they are. I don't know they are, okay? I'm telling you that I okay, don't I can, know that. That's fair. That's fair. I can confirm with you they are, and it's not making a darn difference because they're still Clinton. I, I just have to let you say, speak your piece because I – you know, are you I, saying the transfer portal was good to Clinton? Say again? Are you saying the transfer portal was good to Clinton? Good as in, like, they've got some talent? Yeah, but it hasn't been proven on the field. Okay. I'll leave it at that. Only I don't know. Only difference, only difference is they're pulling a Colorado, but Keith is not pulling a Dion. They've won about the same amount of games. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. So, <laughs> all right, well, hopefully they can get that NIL deal program going like Bearden has because it's not cutting out at Bearden or at uh, Clinton right now. So, I guess we'll have to find out in the off season. All right, boys, enjoy yourselves. All right. Hey, Brad Jones, be good. All right, see you. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back in just a couple minutes. Football is back, and OMB Law is excited for a season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your rep into a check. The Free Medical Clinic of Oak Ridge presents New Year's Eve 2024 Countdown. On Sunday, December 31st, 2023 at 9 p.m. to January 1st, 2024 at 1 a.m. Live band, food trucks, hot air balloons. Sponsored by Tennessee College of Applied Technology, Baird, the City of Oak Ridge, David Coffey, BBB Communication, and Holloway Event Company. Ball drop and fireworks. Come with your friends and family to count down the new year together. Don't miss it. Free to the public. For more information, go to fmcor.org. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians, or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you, and it's about time. Covenant Health for every moment. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now and let's succeed together.
Kathy May Martin has been making real estate dreams a reality for over three decades. Buying or selling real estate is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Choosing the right realtor is next. Thinking of buying or selling? Call Kathy May Martin at Coldwell Banker Jim Henry and Associates for all your real estate needs. Rest assured, with Kathy's knowledge and experience, you will be on the winning team. Make this spring all about enjoying the experience. When you ride on your new Ferris commercial mower, featuring patented suspension technology, you'll have more than freshly manicured grass. You'll experience productivity and comfort like never before. And because you won't be slowing down for those rough spots, you'll mow more lawn in less time. Ferris, experience suspension. SL Bowman & Sons, 524 North Front Street in Rockwood. Onsite Care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of healthcare experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. Onsite Care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, Onsite Care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now Onsite Care welcomes Darren Wright, a board certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865 285 9588 to schedule an appointment at Onsite Care. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. 1952. That's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies' boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Season full of big hits and those nail-biting ear misses. If you've been injured, OEB Law will come to your defense. Call OEB Law and turn your rep into a check. Welcome back to the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night School, where folks, if you need to go to the doctor, go see Free Medical Clinic. They will take care of you. Never turn you away. Don't let your health, don't ignore your health. You got some place to go if you don't have insurance and need some help. Go check them out. Great sponsor here, and we appreciate them. Uh, for what they do for us here on the uh, Friday night scoreboard and they've been with us for you know, two or three years now really and they're good sponsors and we appreciate them so free medical clinic Friday night scoreboard and we appreciate them being the sponsor but Cox we've been watching and I don't know how many times I don't know how many different shots or from different people that we've watched Sanders County West game on that touchdown for West I don't know how you tell I mean Man, yeah, I, I've I've looked at it and said, oh, it wasn't down. And then you look at it and think, well, and you look at it and think, no. And so we looked at some different. There's, I don't know. In real time, it's hard to tell. In, in real, real time, time. <coughs> to me, in real time, it looks like his arm goes down on the the kid from Marist County's shoulder, and it doesn't go to the ground. But man, you can't 
you can't tell. Or I can't tell anyway. And so, we have no way to freeze it. Yeah, well, they don't have no way to freeze it on <coughs> yeah. the field either. They got to make a split second call right then, and it's just it's just part of his knees just, just don't look down, but his left elbow and his you know arm. I mean, it's it's, que it's questionable. Yeah. So yeah, it's just one of those calls, man. It's just a football call, and you just well, which side you know, you're on? on. All right. You're an Ashcan fan, he's definitely down. You're a West fan, he wasn't down. Yeah. And there's always going to be somebody unhappy about that call. And I'm telling you, just as a fan, I don't know. It's and tough I'll, It's a tough call, and it is. It's a tough way to lose a ball game. So it's just a break uh, that you, uh, that you uh, make yourself and for yourself and get. So it happens. But anyway. Anyway, big uh, week eight in the book. Pretty much, uh, it's uh, final, and uh, you know, uh, Cox. I don't. I guess we could talk about summing this up, but uh, for you know, eight, the eighth week, or, or is there a team that you're surprised with right now? Not necessarily better than any. Are you? Are we? Are we shocked that Clinton is two and six right oh, now? Oh, for sure, for sure. I thought they would end up five and five on the year. Four and six at worst. Tonight's loss. Uh, best way to say this. Tonight's loss sort of sums up what's happened this year. It's a devastating loss. It's Turnovers, loss. penalties, special teams. We'll see how good. I know we got a caller that always calls in about coaching. We'll see how good the coaches are for the next couple of weeks because they've got their hands full of getting the team. I mean, they'll have – They'll have a hard time with a team getting them back. I mean, after this loss tonight. Uh, just devastating. It's just it's devastating Your defense loss. doesn't give up a touchdown, you lose. Yeah. And I know then, time of possession was. You look uh, at time of possession and think, well, you know, that their offense must have been lighting it up. No, their offense didn't light it up. Clinton's defense didn't play bad, but still yet there's some times they couldn't get off the field. You know, a 10-minute drive, 17-minute drive out of what 48 minutes 17 yeah. out of 48 minutes that's a lot of that's a chunk of time and i don't know how much time they had total when you see it uh it, it's probably lopsided it, but still yet uh, i don't know I, i'm are you shocked with oak ridge right now being where they're at that was a big win tonight that was impressive um you go you put up 35 points and you give up three that's go, go, a that's yep. a big win um Kingston played well tonight. Uh, did a great job against one of the premier athletes in town. Um, you know, Oneida's rolling pretty good right now. Interesting to see how that plays out. I think Anderson County's defense is in a good spot here for a stretch run. Offense has to be better. Particular one position has to get better for them to be anything in the postseason at all. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm interested to see this Powell thing play out. Not many people talked about Powell this year. They got beat in front of, you know, everybody against Oak Ridge. Oak Ridge beat up on them pretty good. And now they're starting to roll. They got a good defense. So. Um, well, don't you think the 5A, the 5A, and I know there will be some Oak Ridge people who will disagree with this. Don't you think the 5A comes down to Powell and West? Possibly. <clears throat> well, it's going to. They're going to, yeah. Powell West Oak Ridge. Uh, man, Oak Ridge is, I mean, West's defense is so good, but they're going to have to score more than, they're going to score more than eight points against Oak Ridge to beat them. In my opinion, they'd have to score more than eight points. Well, you think that Oak no, Ridge. No, I disagree. I think it's Oak Ridge and West. You don't think it's Powell? Uh, I mean, I, Oak Ridge beat Powell pretty good. I, if I had to pick who the best two are, if I had to pick the best three in order right now, after watching tonight's game, and I'm gonna, you're going to disagree, I go Oak Ridge, West, Powell. Right now. You go West first. You yeah. think West the best 5A team around? I do. They, yeah. If they're healthy. Yeah. For for one hundred percent healthy, I do. Forty seven, forty two. Knox Catholic was down seventeen points in that football game. Come back and win. And 47, you know, everybody 42. thought Knox Catholic would lose that football game oh, yeah. tonight against Brentwood Academy. Yeah. Uh, they thought they'd lose that football game. 
That's a huge win for Sevier County against Mo West. Uh, bad coach, you know, Morristown West is up in that game last night. It's late. They decide to do a stupid onside kick. Hmm. The onside kick backfires on them. Sevier County goes down, ties it up, and, you know, it happens to get gets it in overtime, and they win it in overtime. What are you doing going for an onside kick? Up that's, a good, that's a real good question. You might want to ask the Morristown West coach that. What led him to – why not just go and kick it deep and make it them drive the football? Don't give it to them. It don't matter what Great they say. I, I mean, I can't. I, they, he he ain't gonna sell me on on side kick when you're leading to give somebody a good field position. Here, let's just give you half the field. Let's see what's let's up. Let's just give you half the field. See what's up. I tell you something. Severe County's got Severe County's got a good looking little quarterback. Yep. He's a freshman. He played a pretty good football game last night. I thought. I thought he really did. I thought he played really well tonight. I mean, last night uh, from what I saw of him. Uh, he looked really good. So, uh, Knox Fulton locks up a playoff berth. Has Seymour won a game this year? No. That was senior night at Fulton. So, Jefferson County's story is really good. If you think about it. Yeah. They lose their starting quarterback to the transfer portal and their starting, their, and their best wide receiver. And they've won their first region championship how long did you say 16 years you say? something like that that's a pretty good story that's pretty good uh, no high I school agree. football no, I, yeah that's a pretty lose good story. quarterback one of your best wide receivers yeah it's a good story and you didn't lose your quarterback and wide receiver to graduation either you just lost when it comes to transfer, transfer portal i just they've got we got to stop that that's got to get stopped somehow. you don't like that portal no i don't like it. got to stop it it's a, Some people are saying just let's let it allow it once. Let's do like the NCAA and let's allow it once. I don't think it teaches the kids anything. I don't like it. I don't even like it in college. Okay? Oh, I agree. I don't even. But now they have uh, changed some of the rules on it now. You've only, you're have only you only going to have a certain time frame to do it. Yeah. They've, they're going to cut the time frame down. you got to do it fairly within about a 30-day period now. Yep. Uh, so they have cut some of the time frame down. I think eventually you'll see the NIL deals. I see. I think you'll see them get out of hand eventually. And uh, you'll, you'll watch that go with the wayside too. Yeah. That's me anyway. I mean. You know, I'm going to – you just <laughs> brought up – we've got a guy that watches, used to be on the show, sitting in one of these seats. From my understanding, his son got – he started special teams last week at Navy. At Navy? Yeah. I'd like to. I'd like for him to call in and give us a rundown on that. Oh, you're talking about Richie's son? Hey? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. From I, didn't my know, under, I didn't know he played. From my understanding, he was uh, he was on special teams. It was I don't know if it's punt return, kick return, but uh, yeah. From my understanding, he was on special teams this past weekend. Um, and uh, his big ugly mug. Uh, was on, you know, his dad's ugly mug was on that uh, as they were walking to the stadium. He loves the camera. Oh, yeah. The guy loves the camera. Oh, yeah, he does. He's got a face for radio, but he loves the camera. Yep. He does. So, yeah, he. Uh, Maybe he's watching. He'll give us a call. If you're watching, Richie, give us a call. We like to talk yeah. to you. And uh, so, Question what about the balls last week? I told Chandler, man, you know, I don't know. It's so so game, you know. Uh, you know, reading the article about our quarterback after the wide receiver got hurt, he didn't want to play no more. Who didn't? Our quarterback didn't. He was, really? Yeah, he didn't want to play. After the injury, he had to convince him he had to play. He didn't want to go back out. He didn't want to play. I understand getting – I told, it's like I, me and Chandler talk. I understand the getting upset part, but, man – you won't go back out and play for your your, your man, right? I, I mean, didn't. I didn't know this. I didn't I'm hear this. It was in the paper. Really? You, you want to go back out and play for your your teammate? You want to win for sure now? And then uh, the quarterback from South Carolina has been going on at the Tennessee game for the Tennessee people. What nothing but their their Super Bowl game? That's BS too. Who wants South? I'm gonna listen. If the South Carolina game was Tennessee Super Bowl, then our season is cooked. Because we got some Super Bowl games coming up. Let's try Texas a and Let's try Kentucky. Let's try Alabama, and let's try Georgia. Those are Super Bowl games, buddy, not South Carolina. You're an idiot if you think that Absolutely. was a Super Bowl game. 
Spencer Rattler, you're an idiot if you think that. I, you're just an idiot. I agree. I've said all year the biggest game in Nayland Stadium all year is the Texas a and game. I've said it all year. It is a big game, but there'll be a bigger <laughs> game coming after that. But if you, don't, after that. if you don't win no, this. No, it don't matter. It, it don't, don't matter. matter. No, it don't matter. Because if you don't win this one, then you're going to go play Alabama, and you probably won't win that one. All of a sudden, you got three losses, and Georgia comes rolling in here. It ain't nowhere well, big a game. I'm not for sure at Tennessee, and don't they go to Kentucky? They do. I'm not for sure they can go to Kentucky and get that game. Tennessee's got some big games coming up. I mean, some huge games coming Next up. Next three weeks. It's huge. Huge. They're huge. A&M at home. Bama on the road. Kentucky on the road. Three straight weeks. If he wins two of those, he'd be good. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm serious. If he could win two of those games, he won't make the college football playoffs, but he wins two of those games. Does to win two of those games, does it need to be Alabama and Kentucky, or does it need to be Alabama and A&M? I don't think it matters. You don't think it matters? I think he just wins. I think he's winning two of those games. Ooh, I think it's, one of them's got to be Alabama. You got to. I think he's got to win. I'm he's saying win Alabama. Yeah, I mean, you always want to beat Alabama. Yeah. But I think he needs to win two of the three. I mean, if you go into the Georgia game with two losses, what if he just wins all three of them? Uh, this place will be rocking and rolling in November the 11th or whatever that is. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'll, so, I'll probably sell my tickets to sit on the back porch of the lake house and watch that one. Because they will be, it will be rocky top. I mean, it will be wild. For a chance to go to the SEC championship. Yep. That game's for the SEC championship if they win the next three. Yeah, they got to win them. Uh, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Tennessee's got bigger games than what last week's game was with South Carolina. The Florida, so. law, the Florida loss was just bad. Yep. Yeah. And then it, what even makes that loss even more worse is the way Kentucky thumped Florida. So that made it even worse. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Hey, folks, 483-81112. Give us a call, and we're about we're getting close to winding this bad boy down because there's no Tennessee football this uh, weekend. So we'll be out uh, on that and. Uh, We'll get out of here here in just a little we're bit. We're gonna go on fall break, huh? We're gonna go on fall. Yeah, break. we're gonna go on fall break. <laughs> so uh, we'll uh, let's take another commercial break, and we'll be right back. Medical Clinic of Oak Ridge presents New Year's Eve 2024 Countdown. On Sunday, December 31st, 2023 at 9 p.m. to January 1st, 2024 at 1 a.m. Live band, food trucks, hot air balloons, sponsored by Tennessee College of Applied Technology, Baird, the City of Oak Ridge, David Coffey, BBB Communications, and Holloway Event Company. Ball drop and fireworks. Come with your friends and family to count down the new year together. Don't miss it. Free to the public. For more information, go to fmcor.org.
As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. Make this spring all about enjoying the experience. When you ride on your new Ferris commercial mower featuring patented suspension technology, you'll have more than freshly manicured grass. You'll experience productivity and comfort like never before. And because you won't be slowing down for those rough spots, you'll mow more lawn in less time. Ferris, experience suspension. Your local Ferris dealer is SL Bowman & Sons, 524 North Front Street in Rockwood. Call 865-354-0600. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment. Kathy May Martin has been making real estate dreams a reality for over three decades. Buying or selling real estate is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Choosing the right realtor is next. Thinking of buying or selling? Call Kathy May Martin at Coldwell Banker Jim Henry & Associates for all your real estate needs. Rest assured, with Kathy's knowledge and experience, you will be on the winning team. On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of health care experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at roanstate.edu now, and let's succeed together. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Welcome back to the Free Medical Clinic Friday Night Scoreboard, and uh, we appreciate Free Medical Clinic, as we've said each and every Friday night for the last eight weeks. We appreciate them being the sponsor of this show, and like I've said the last eight weeks, if you need to see a doctor and you've got some difficulties, check Free Medical Clinic out. They'll not turn you away. They'll help you out. So we appreciate their sponsorship, along with everybody else that you've watched during commercial breaks. So we're at the time where we would normally 
dive into Tennessee, and we've talked just briefly about Tennessee, and we'll talk a little bit about – we'll finish up on Tennessee and talk about their next game. And, Cox, I think, I think you might have said this at going to break, or you said this while we was in break. You think Tennessee's most important game is coming up, and it's Texas A&M. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, uh, that's uh, Well, it's a must win for a lot of reasons, but – it, it kicks off this long. It kicks off, kicks off a really tough stretch. You can't kick off the three-game stretch with a home loss after a bye week. Right. And okay. then you got Texas A&M rolling in here after Alabama. So they're going to come in on a high or come in on a low. I just think you, you know, have to win that ball I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if Alabama beat Texas A&M or not. I don't know if Texas A&M can beat Alabama. Alabama taking, is probably the most unpredictable team right yeah. now than anybody I've ever seen. Just I'm kind of, taking I mean, Nick I'm Saban sure. over Jimbo. You gonna take? Well, I, probably so, but I would probably do the same thing. But Alabama's quarterback situation is still a little shaky, in For my sure. opinion. It's a little shaky. Uh, I don't think Alabama's as dominant as they have been in the last four or five years. I think all this uh, NIL stuff has caught up with them finally. What do you think about the Big Ten and the Pac-12 having all these teams ranked in the top ten and the SEC only having two? Well, that usually shakes out at the end, but right now, I mean, big game. To, you just have to see, you know, I, I think, you know, why part of that is, I think, first of all, LSU's playing bad, Alabama's playing bad. Uh, Tennessee's got a loss in there. Yep. So there's three teams that were probably in the top ten, 10 a few weeks ago that are no longer in the top ten because of losses. So uh, I, I think that's part of it. And the, the weirdest thing I'm fixing to say is I think Missouri's ranked in the top 25. They are. Uh, what? Where did they come off and get any good at? I mean, they snuck in here through the back door. LSU, Missouri tomorrow at Missouri. And everybody's calling for Missouri to win that football game. If Missouri wins that football game, Brian Kelly better get his accent going and find another job. It's coming for him on that. You're exactly right. I agree with you 100%. That's what I said at break. He might be the he might be the first casualty. Of, well, he's not going to be the first. There's already been one at Michigan State. Hey, but do you hear who the rumor is that about the Michigan State job? No. <laughs> this will get you chuckling. Butch Jones. There ain't no way. That's what they're saying, maybe. Possibility. No I'm way. telling you, that's what they're saying. Butch Jones, baby. That dude can't going line to Michigan up. Michigan State. Dude can't line up. Well, he might not can line up, but you know, maybe he can go up there and get him a big contract again and get fired and draw him another big check. No he'll way. be set. They, they ain't no way. That's just a rumor. It's a rumor. Yeah, well, it is. It's a rumor, but yeah, I just yeah. think it's a funny rumor talking to me because I think he's getting spanked wherever he's at right now. Arkansas, is it Arkansas State, State. he's at? I think he's getting spanked yeah. and has been getting spanked bad, real yeah. bad. So the game of the – I mean, I think the game of the day probably tomorrow, you got two or three. I mean, you got Texas. Texas and Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah, but everybody's calling that a oh, – they, they're saying that game's overhyped. They don't think it's as – I don't, Texas, I don't know. It's Texas always is good. Their defense line Texas is really is good. Texas is pretty good. I don't know about Oklahoma, but that is a big ball game. A&M, Alabama, that's another big ball game. Georgia, Kentucky. Georgia, Kentucky is another big ball game. Uh, I was trying to think who else that we – Missouri and LSU. LSU. I don't know. And you got a, Notre Dame, Louisville. I don't Louisville, know that it's a big ball game, but it's, you know, it's two ranked teams. Yeah. Good, good I'm, a little, I'm a little shocked on you know Missouri being ranked, but so what? <laughs> so out <laughs> <coughs> uh, who Prime's got tomorrow? Hadn't really. There's not been much about him recently after he's lost uh, a couple in a row. Yeah, I got Prime fatigue, and well, you uh, almost got a Prime hood shirt. If I can get back over, there, I'll get you one. Yeah. You'll have to wear it on TV. I'll wear it for you. Oh, I know you I'll will. Wear I'll wear my shades, too. <coughs> Man, you'll need them. Yeah, I'll wear my shades. So, uh, uh, they're at Arizona State tomorrow. One and three, Arizona State versus three and two, Colorado. They might get a win. They might go out there and get a win. Yeah, they're going to win at Arizona State. And then they got Stanford, and then they got UCLA and Oregon State. UCLA's not been playing very well neither recently, uh, so. Chip Kelly. 
Chip Kelly, he's not played well recently neither. So uh, yeah. uh, that's uh, another another coach that could be on the hot seat just a tad. I ain't saying he's on a lot. Lane Kiffin's been on the hot seat a little bit. I don't know if last week's win. I'd say that got everybody that off got, of That him. got everybody off of him. Uh, ranked 15th in the country. Where's Tennessee ranked right now? 20, 21st or something. They went down in the polls after the win. How do you win a game and go down? An SEC game. You won an SEC, SEC game, game went down. That just goes to show you that everybody doesn't think the SEC is the real deal this year. No, they're not getting they're not getting any respect. That's for sure. Oh, everybody's going to give respect to Big Old High State. I mean, it's yeah, you know, overrated coach up there. Yeah, you know, I like Lou Holtz called him out. And then I liked it even better because Steve Spurrier said he agreed with Lou Holtz. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said he agreed with Lou Holtz. <laughs> I love it. So that'll make him even matter up there. I mean, that you know, Ohio State's future comes down to one game: Ohio State, Michigan. And I think oh, Michigan's won that game the last two years or three years in a row. So two, two. So about to be you know, three. about to be three, and it's the same old story again. You know, uh, for Ohio State. Uh, you know, play up or not. You know, and I tell you another team that's not been in the playoff picture recently that I think might could be a contender, and it's dependent on be, they've got to beat Ohio State. That's Penn State. Yeah, Penn State's not playing bad football this year. If you really want to look at a football team, it's not playing bad football. Yeah. So uh, that's another team to look at. So what did you think about last week's game with Tennessee and South Carolina? Was you? Was happy with it? I mean, I'm sure he's happy because it caused a win, but do you think Tennessee played well enough, or was there, it still sporadic, wasn't it? Defensive line whipped South Carolina's offensive line. Uh huh. Our, our running backs are really good. They're, that's, you're almost back to where you used to be back in the fall. Are we era. three deep at running back? No doubt. No three doubt. Three deep. No doubt. That's deep. Yeah, and all three of them are good. How I many? think Sampson's the most explosive. Yeah, everybody's saying that. I think that. he's got to figure out how to stay out of the doghouse. Yeah, and he has trouble with that. Yeah, he's got to. I mean, he goes yeah. a game, you don't even hear nothing from him. <coughs> yeah, which is how accountability. Many, how many offensive linemen are we away from having a really, I mean, really a good offensive line? And I know it's not going to happen this year, yeah. but are we a couple more recruiting cycles to go through I think before so. we get some linemen in there? I think if these, if this stable of running backs had a little bit better offensive line, Milton wouldn't have to throw it that much. I, I just don't think he'd have to throw it that much. But he, there's a reason why Josh does not let him throw the ball across the middle. What do you think that reason is? Because he throws it to their team. <laughs> so that theory of when you throw the ball, bad things happen. It does happen with him. That's just like I say. You but throw he's the ball, really bad good at happen. that quick, short slant out route. Just where when he doesn't have to do anything but catch the snap set his feet and throw it, he's great. But when he has to start moving just a little bit, you better cover your eyes. I mean, it's that safety, I set up in the box last week, and that safety literally probably took three steps the entire play when he threw it to him. He, I mean, I mean, and what's crazy is he could have just stepped up in the pocket and ran for 10 or 15 yards. He don't like to run, though. No, yeah. he has to. You better learn how to run. That's a big old boy not to like to run. You don't like being a hit. That's what you say. But, I mean. So, we're counting on this guy to take us down the stretch here with A&M, Alabama, Kentucky, and Georgia. Fitz Peter said he's, he can throw the football. When he starts having to move, it's a struggle. But. Georgia and Kentucky tomorrow. Yeah, I think Kentucky's in trouble. I think Georgia will come out ready to go, and I think they're in trouble. I think. You, Kirby Smart's team's not going to play bad three weeks in a row. You hope not. They won't. They won't. That tight end's the best player. I think the tight end might be the best player in the country. Well, he for sure is the best player at his position. There's no doubt about it. But he's, he might be really the good. best offensive player in the country. He's for sure a first-round draft pick oh, in the NFL. High level. High level draft pick. He's That young man's going to make a lot of money. Yeah, for a up, long time. For a long time. He's going to make a lot of money. Because he can catch the football. I, I mean, I'm serious. He might be the best offensive threat in the country. And when's the last time you could say that about a tight end? 
be a while. He's that good. He changed the game at Auburn. They don't win the football game without him at Auburn. They couldn't guard him. You know, do you find it hard to believe that we're really that Auburn is not really a factor any right now? They're not a factor, or no, haven't are. been a factor for a while. Their defensive line's good. Their offensive line's not good. It's bad. How's our guy Chadwell doing at Liberty? Undefeated, five and zero. Oh. He's undefeated. One last night uh, on a. He was, they were up 21 to six, I think. And Sam Houston ends up coming down, driving down the field, and had four plays from the six yard line and couldn't score, and they win. First time they've been five and zero in like four or five years, but they're five and zero. They might be ranked after this week. Yeah, they're five and zero. Is it? Would that be the first time they've been ranked, or have they no, been ranked they were before? Ranked with Hugh they Freeze. Were, Hugh Freeze had them ranked. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, Bishop was going to Coastal Carolina, and then when Chadwell left, he come on to Tennessee. But he's hurt right now, isn't he? Yes. Or you think they're going to hold him out, probably? He'll, he'll redshirt. He's not healthy. He's not healthy? And, I mean, if he's better than those three guys running it, then he's an NFL player. Well, he's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if, how, if he's better than the three we've those been three talking about, but he's pretty He's pretty good. Those three are good. But the problem that I've got is we've not mentioned Vanderbilt, any. You don't have to. You don't have to. They need to find a new league to play in. <laughs> so, you're talking about all we talking about all these teams going at all these, you know, making these big conferences. I, I just think that I, I almost think getting Oklahoma and Texas that's, coming, whether it's next year or the next, I just think that's almost too many teams. Yeah, it's hard to keep. Why can't up, we just yeah. keep? Why can't we just keep what we got right now? And, and if we were gonna, if we were gonna add a couple of teams, we should have kicked a couple of teams out. That's right. Like Vanderbilt and Mississippi State, Vanderbilt, Arkansas, Vanderbilt, and somebody, kick them out, get them out, and you know Vanderbilt and South Carolina, kick them out. It's all about TV contracts, David. Yeah, but what happens? What happens? And me and Brad's talk. Me and Brad has talked about this a lot. Okay, and I've texted him back and forth. You see all these stuff talking about ESPN, how much trouble financially these guys are in. What happens if ESPN wants to just go belly up right now? How many college football teams does it put out of business almost? Because ESPN's carrying a lot of the contracts for yeah. the SEC and all this. They're, they're carrying the money. And you're talking about a French, you're talking about somebody, I don't think they are going to go belly up. But man, they've had to let a lot of people go and financially, you know, you hear some of their financial uh, troubles, they're not in good shape. None whatsoever. The biggest story to me is with with the college football and ESPN. ESPN owns the CFB. They own the college football playoffs. Did you know that? I didn't know that. They own it. The NCAA doesn't own it. ESPN and ABC own the college football playoffs. They pay the NCAA a flat fee. The NCAA owns the NCAA tournament for basketball, boys and girls, you know, men and women. They own the World Series for the softball and the baseball. They do not own. They are paid a flat fee. ESPN owns the college football playoffs. Why do you think they went from, is it 4 to 12? Is that what they went to? Or 8? No, went, yeah, it will be. It will be. 8, I think. 8. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's all driven by money. NCAA had some say so in it when it went, but that would pro that's probably the extent. They're so. just collecting their money. Just, yeah. You know, they put the committee together and all that, but ESPN owns college football playoffs. I didn't know that. I didn't realize yeah. that. Still, ESPN sort of is on shaky ground. So oh, I agree. It's a shaky, it's a shaky thing. So, uh, but uh, you hear a lot of people talking bad about them. Hey, one quick question, and I'm I know this has not got anything to do with what we talked about here on Friday night, but what do you think about? Tennessee's basketball, right? What you're hearing right now from Barnes with the team he's got. Could he have a good team this year? Yeah. I mean, he's going to, he is, but he will have a good team. But the question with Barnes is can he win in the postseason when it matters? That's something he's not been able to It's do. a great product every year to go watch at TBA. I mean, he's been great every year. I have two season tickets. I love going to watch, I love going to cheer him on. You know, great guy to lead a basketball program, but man, it gets shaky in March and April. 
He gets shaky. He's another one he's got. We've apparently got a four or five star recruit right now that ain't been doing what he's supposed to be doing, and he's <laughs> good for him. He's not participating right now. Good for he him. He got to be at media day, and as a, at, right after media day, See gone. It. They said, went to practice or nothing. He's yeah. gone. Apparently, he's not taking care of schoolwork. Hey, our game of the week next week is. You talk about a uh, a good game of the week next week, and it it will be a good game. Uh, it's Bearden and Oak Ridge, uh, two football teams that are definitely in going in the right direction i'll say that for sure i would think well as many games that are off next as many teams that are off next week it is probably the premier game around here would you think so i think so i think it'll be a huge crowd maryville and cleveland will be a good game but that's over that's on it but there'll be a huge crowd at blankenship and wildcats ain't been at home i don't think in a couple of weeks or something like that so maybe three weeks, to be a matter of fact. Coach so, Gaddis going to coach again or is Derek? Uh, Derek ain't be coach. They fired Coach Gaddis. He's out. They put him back into retirement. So, you know, he just stood over on the sidelines anyway. He needed one last win, didn't he? Yeah, and I was hoping he'd have one last loss and it'd be at Clinton. He'd go down. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sure somebody will tell him I made that comment and he'd be want, he'd have something to fire back in, but that's beside the point. He'll want your dog set yeah, for him. Yeah, he'll want me dog set for him. Anyway, next week is uh, Beard and Oak Ridge. Catch that game. It'll be right here on Channel 12. And then until next week, folks, we'll be right back here on the Friday Night Scoreboard next Friday night about 10 o'clock. Check us out. The Free Medical Clinic of Oak Ridge presents New Year's Eve 2024 Countdown on Sunday, December 31st, 2023 at 9 p.m. to January 1st, 2024 at 1 a.m. Live band, food truck, hot air balloons, sponsored by Tennessee College of Applied Technology, Baird, the City of Oak Ridge, David Coffee, BBB Communication, and Holloway Event Company. Ball drop and fireworks. Come with your friends and family to count down the new year together. Don't miss it. Free to the public. For more information, go to fmcor.org. At Ferris, we want you to get the most out of your time and end each day feeling good. That's why we pioneered exclusive lawnmower suspension technology, allowing for full speed mowing even over the roughest terrain. Grow your business by getting more done in less time with Ferris. Ferris, work hard, feel good. Found exclusively at independent Ferris dealers. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians, or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you, and it's about time. Covenant Health, for every moment.
On-site care in Kingston is accepting new patients. Nurse practitioner Candace Templeton has over 25 years of health care experience in offering management of chronic care conditions. On-site care offers free sports physicals for established patients. Plus, on-site care offers hormone replacement therapy with compounded pellets. And now on-site care welcomes Darren Wright, a board-certified family nurse practitioner who will be accepting new patients. Call 865-285-9588 to schedule an appointment at on-site care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach, to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one with your instructors. Together, we succeed, one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at roanstate.edu now, and let's succeed together. Kathy May Martin has been making real estate dreams a reality for over three decades. Buying or selling real estate is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Choosing the right realtor is next. Thinking of buying or selling? Call Kathy May Martin at Coldwell Banker Jim Henry and Associates for all your real estate needs. Rest assured, with Kathy's knowledge and experience, you will be on the winning team. cheerleaders here at ORED warming up for tonight's big game. Ready? Clinton Dragons! Clinton Dragons! Clinton Dragons! ORUD has exciting appliance incentives to offer your family. Buy appliances and get rewarded. It's as simple as that. Learn more about how much you can save at ORUD.org. You can save over $1,000 on your annual utility bills when you make the switch to natural gas for heating, cooking, and clothes drying. Natural gas is affordable, reliable, and safe. We are proud to offer our customers a product that saves money, provides consistent service, and is a clean energy source. ORUD is your one-stop shop. We sell and install gas appliances for our customers and make it easy to add to your bill with our 0% interest financing. ORUD is your affordable energy choice, so make the game-winning play by switching to natural gas this football season. To the temperance movement. Investors led by a union general founded the area in order to mine coal and iron ore. Fearing Confederate sympathizers would not enjoy living and working on a site run by a union general, John T. Wilder, Wilder decided to name the town after a small, lesser known investor named William O. Rockwood. And wouldn't you know it that in 1921, Rockwood got a high school football team too. I don't know how the two areas scheduled each other, but I assume one looked at the other and said, No way. You've got a football team too? We should like totally play each other because that's what they did. Little did they know that beginning in 1924, the two teams would play every single year, making their annual matchup the longest running consecutive rivalry in all of Tennessee. 104 games later and here we are. And this year we get the added bonus that this is also a region game. Who will come out on top? We'll find out tonight in our OEB Law Game of the Week. Day or night, 24-7, someone will be there to answer and give you a free consultation and get to work on your case immediately. Call 865-546-1111 or visit the website full of helpful information, reckontoacheck.com. That's OEB Law. I'm Aaron Harvey, joined by the much revered doctor and coach Dan Shoemaker. I love rivalry games, and we've seen a few this year, but there aren't many in the entire country with a history like this one has. Yeah, I agree, Aaron. This is the longest rivalry, and as someone who has friends both in Rockwood,
Lakewood and Harriman. I know what this game means to each of those communities. I married a Harriman girl 34 years ago, and Miss Jesse still has some very strong feelings about this game as well. It is a very special rivalry, and I'm glad that we get to be a part of it. And we will tell you about this rivalry and other things going on around the area as well, courtesy of Elaine Walden of East Tennessee Properties. She is our pregame sponsor this year, and we are happy to have her on board. Elaine has nearly 10 years of experience. She does millions of dollars in sales every single year. That is her on the screen there. You can give her a call or a text, 423-619-6748, for all of your real estate needs. Again, that number, 423-619-6748. There are some fantastic games taking place tonight around the area. We will preview those, but of course, also, we've got a great game tonight. Harriman at Rockwood, the longest consecutive rivalry in all of East, uh, in all of Tennessee, uh, maybe even close to the longest running rivalry in the country. But uh, we will preview that game as well a little bit later on our East Tennessee uh, Elaine Wald of East Tennessee Properties pregame show on our OAB Law Game of the Week. At OEB Law, our home is your home. And your family is our family. And down here, family takes care of family. Giving back and helping out whenever needed. OEB Law is proud to be from East Tennessee. OEB Law feels like home. Daniel Forrester has been trusted by Anderson County families for nearly two decades. Daniel has appeared in Anderson County Chancery, Circuit, Sessions, and Juvenile Court thousands of times over the past decade. A Rule 31 mediator, Daniel has been trusted to mediate hundreds of cases across Anderson County. A community leader, Daniel has worked closely with local officials to make Anderson County a better place. A conservative and dedicated husband and father, Daniel's faith has shaped his character and integrity. On March 5th, vote Daniel Forrester for Anderson County Chancellor. Kathy May Martin has been making real estate dreams a reality for over three decades. Buying or selling real estate is one of the most important decisions you'll ever make. Choosing the right realtor is next. Thinking of buying or selling? Call Kathy May Martin at Coldwell Banker Jim Henry and Associates for all your real estate needs. Rest assured, with Kathy's knowledge and experience, you will be on the winning team. Evans Mortuary has been serving the needs of families in and around Roan County since 1976. As established members of our hometown community, we understand the security of dealing with people you know you can trust. We build our reputation on this trust. The Evans family appreciates the confidence the community has expressed in us over the years and will constantly strive to earn that favor. Evans Mortuary, 805 North Gateway. 1952, that's the year Hammers opened the first store in East Tennessee. Now there are five stores and there's always something new. Like in Hammers' popular ladies boutique department, you'll find the lowest price possible on new arrivals every week. Find similar deals in the men's department and the expanded rug department. Plus, special purchases always offer surprise savings. You never know what you'll find next at Hammers. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask Griffin Insurance Agency in Kingston if auto owners make sense for you. Welcome back to the Elaine Wald of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Elaine has the experience to help you buy and sell your home. I mean, look at her credentials. Every year, she produces millions of dollars in sales, with about $10 million last year alone. She serves nearly all of East Tennessee, so give her a call or text 423-619-6748. 423-619-6748. We anticipate some great games tonight across the area. Let's start with Wartburg making the trip to Oakdale. There have been two common opponents so 
far this season. This season, and those are Coalfield and Harriman. Coalfield beat Wartburg 48 to 12. Beat Oakdale 42 to 16. Wartburg beat Harriman 21 to 18. Oakdale beat Harriman 12 to 10. The margins of loss and victory are extremely close. And looking at this as objectively as possible, there's no reason why this shouldn't be one of the closest games tonight, despite the recent history between these two. The winner margin of victory has been in the single digits just three times this century. Yeah, that game has become a bit of a rivalry over the last few years. Coach Human, who played at Wartburg, was the Oakdale Middle School coach for several years before coming back home to coach at Wartburg. Coach Rick Brown, who is the current middle school coach at Wartburg, was a longtime assistant coach in Oakdale for several years as well. Then when I started coaching, head coach Rory Foster, an Oakdale grad, was the Wartburg head coach. And David Stevens, who was coaching football that year at Oakdale, came back to Wartburg the next year to coach basketball. So there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of mixing right there. But but I think all that being said, Oakdale has had a little more success here recently, and that builds confidence. But I think whoever can get on track first in that matchup tonight is going to come out on top. That's a lot of connections between Oakdale and Wartburg uh, that, I mean, you just named. And I think Coach Foster was uh, my physical science teacher when I was in high school. Right. And uh, Wartburg grad graduated with me, Travis Nelson, the current boys uh, high school basketball coach uh, yes. at Oakdale. At Oakdale, absolutely. So uh, there's some more connections there. So. Tra Travis coached with me for a couple of years. Coaching that's right. Wife, coaching quarterbacks. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, and that should be a great game tonight. We hope to get some uh, updates on that one. So we'll get that to you throughout our broadcast. Staying with the smaller schools, Oliver Springs comes in tonight with a record of 5-2, and two, having lost the first two games to superior competition. Tyler Harper's team ain't scared, and tonight the Bobcats host 6-1 and one Whitwell, which is a pretty good program, I guess. I mean, they did win a state title in 2018. This Tiger team probably isn't going to challenge for a gold ball this year, but it's still a solid program that will help prepare the purple and gold for the postseason. Yeah, I agree. Dipping down in the old Sequatchie Valley Conference, uh, is never easy. Uh, they've already played South Pittsburgh from that same region. And while this Whitwell team will not be at that level tonight, they will play the Bobcats tough. I expect a close game, one that will probably be decided late. I think special teams or turnovers will be a big part of how that thing turns out. It will be a good test for Coach Harper's team tonight. I agree. You know, the Clinton Dragons, we've seen them this year. They've had a rough season, winning only two games. But all things considered, Darrell Keith's team still should be playing like it has everything to lose because a win tonight would likely mean that they are playoff bound. The same can be said for the opposing team, though. The Lenore City Panthers are 1-0 in a region with just five teams, having secured a win against Campbell County. Well, Clinton is 1-1, one and, one, and they've also had a win against Campbell County. You get that second win in a region of five teams, you're probably going to the postseason. I think, I think Lenore City probably exceeded everyone's expectations, you know, especially considering last Last year's coach, Gary Duggar, was let go in July and replaced by then linebackers coach, but former Lenore City head coach Mike Zeller. For Clinton, the players may feel like they're underachieving at this point, even though they're still very much on schedule to make the playoffs and have the talent to make a run. This should be an interesting game. You know, last week I heard Coach Keith talking a whole lot about the two E's. Uh, for that, for him, it was effort and execution. While this team is giving good effort most every week, uh, the execution sometimes falls off. And when you play a schedule like they've played, you've got to have the execution for four quarters every week. Uh, that being said, Clinton is still in the playoff picture. And if they can get four good quarters tonight, I think that they're going to uh, do well. Uh, but they need to take care of their business. On the other side of the coin, though, you got Coach Zeller. And he, he may see this as a trap game for Clinton because nobody's expecting uh, Lenore City to, to come out and win this thing. And you may catch them on a losing streak and feeling a little bit sorry for themselves, feeling a little bit down. Playing that underdog role can give you some advantages. And like Janice Joplin said, me and Bobby McGee, 
freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. And if the Panthers can play free tonight, I think that they, they good things may happen for them. They might pull that upset. I love that reference. That's a great reference. Janice Joplin. So you never know what you're going to get. You, you come in for the Elaine Wall of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. You know, you might get you might get a history lesson. You might get uh, a Janice Joplin reference. You just never know. So uh, <laughs> appreciate you dropping that in there. We are going to talk about some other games because, like I said, there's a lot of great games going on around the area tonight. But we're also, we've got a great game going on tonight. The longest consecutive rivalry in all of Tennessee. It is Harriman at Rockwood. And we will preview that as as well we are about 16 minutes from kickoff says the clock so really looking forward to this one and uh, we will preview that when we get back to our elaine walden of east tennessee properties pregame show patterson's appliances has been helping families like yours find quality home appliances from trusted brands including whirlpool maytag and kitchenaid for over 55 years our knowledgeable appliance specialists know how to outfit your kitchen or laundry room with the right appliances to meet your needs we service what we sell with our own in-house factory trained service technicians. And for the DIYers, our parts department is always ready to help customers find the appliance parts they need. Patterson's Home Appliances, because we care. A college degree can't be earned in just one day, but can be achieved by doing our best together, just one day at a time. From getting a great start with your Roan State Success Coach to learning together in the classroom, accessing free tutoring in the Learning Center, and working one-on-one -on -one with your instructors. Together, we succeed one day at a time. Oh, and free tuition helps. So apply at RoanState.edu now, and let's succeed together. takes care of family, giving back and helping out whenever needed. OEB Law is proud to be from East Tennessee. OEB Law feels like home. band with the playing of our national anthem and I say this a lot but one thing I love about coming and seeing a game in Roan County all of these Roan County schools have bands and I love a band at a sporting event just love it, it adds so much to the, to the atmosphere Gosh, it does it really does so we're back at Rockwood for the Elaine Wald of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. You know, Elaine serves almost all of East Tennessee, so if you're watching this, she can probably help you out. If you need to buy or sell a home, do what so many others have done and call or text Elaine Walden at 402-464-5000. 
423-619-6748. You can't argue with facts and multiple millions of dollars in sales on a yearly basis. It's just a fact. That number again, 423-619-6748. The defending 4A state champion will host the defending 5A state champion tonight as West heads to Anderson County. West had a 21-game winning streak snapped last week against Alcoa, but the Rebels still boast wins earlier this season against the likes of Maryville, Bearden, and Farragut. Anderson County, meanwhile, has looked better and better with each passing week as the team begins to gel. West will be looking to take out pent-up rage, but Anderson County will see this as an opportunity to prove that it still belongs in the discussion when talking about the state's best. What do you expect in this one? Uh, both of these teams have powerful and efficient offenses. So a lot of times in games like that, it comes down to the difference might be in the defensive side of the ball. Which defense can slow down the other offense enough to allow their offense to get and expand the lead? I think that games like this often come down to special teams and turnovers and a lot of those intangible things that you see. To me, this one is a toss-up. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't bet money either way on this one. The only slight advantage, the Mavericks seem to always play well at home. And since this one is at home, that might be a, a difference as well. But, yeah, I see this one as a toss-up. I'm really looking forward to see how Andrews County is able to hold up against West and how West responds coming off of that Alcoa loss. Uh, Bearden has a chance to be a region champion following an overtime win at Maryville last week. The Bulldogs are literally less than two minutes away from being undefeated. But with Maryville suffering a loss, the Cleveland Blue Raiders also see a chance for a region ship. Those two will collide with the winner facing a regular season title showdown later against Bradley Central. We're witnessing history, by the way. Maryville has won its region for 22 straight seasons, and that's going to come to an end this season. You know, a couple, a couple of weeks ago, Aaron, you used a reference to the Roman Empire when we were talking about Maryville, and I think that that's kind of appropriate here. Now that they are not the top dog in the yard, other teams like Bearden will have a chance to step up. Cleveland, Bradley Central, they're also trying to make their mark, mark their territory as well. The next couple of weeks are going to sort all of that out tonight, but I think Bearden will pull this one out late. It was those Germanic tribes that came in and took down the Roman Empire, and it, it does kind of seem like your, your Beardens, your Clevelands, your Bradley Centrals, because Cleveland got a win against Maryville, an unlikely win against Maryville last season, and that's one of them. And then this season, it's Bradley Central getting the win, followed by Bearden. That's another one. It's, yeah. It's, it's, got, it's kind of a slow... Uh, slow descent, I mm -hmm. guess you might say, but so was the Roman Empire. That's it right. Took a couple thousand years. Yep. So, you know, the regions, uh, we're talking about this one, they're starting to come together, and as we're getting into the back half of the football season. So let's take a look at those. You see on your screen there, Region 2, Single A. Uh, you've got Coalfield, Oliver Springs up top, both those undefeated, and they're going to have a game here, uh, I think, next week or in a couple of weeks, two, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks, we've got that one. And then you've got Rockwood there sitting in third, followed by Greenback, Oakdale, Midway, and then there is Harriman with Sunbright down there at the bottom. You know, top to bottom, Region 2 1A is probably, the, the well, it is the toughest region in the state. Uh, our, the teams that finish fourth, fifth, and sixth, you know, would have a good shot finishing the top two in, in other regions for sure. I yeah. think Cofield and Oliver Springs are in the driver's seat, and that game in two weeks is going to kind of define what this region, who's one and who's two. Uh, Rockwood and Greenback are in the three and four spot now, and that kind of takes you to the playoffs, but you're on the road. You'd rather play at home, obviously. Yeah, and we'll talk a little bit about Harriman later. Harriman 0 and 4. Don't be fooled by that record because Harriman has hung in tough, and they've lost some heartbreaking games this season at the last moment. And so, uh, some right, the only team in there that probably wouldn't be competitive in a lot of other regions, but, right. uh, you know, they've only got like 14 players. They had uh, trouble bringing up their Little League program. They didn't have one for a couple of years there, and so they're trying to build that back up. And so it's going to take a little bit, but they're getting there. The Midway-Greenback game last night was really interesting yeah. to me as well. 
the way that that one turned out. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a tough, tough region. So moving to Region 2, AA, York Institute, they won that region last year. Looks like they're on their way to doing that again this year. They're uh, number one in the state. And you, number one according to the, the AP state. poll, they are number one. So, uh, so you know, Region 2, AA also. Pretty, pretty tough. Pretty daggum tough there. So you've got Oneida, Bledsoe County, Polk County. You've got Wartburg and uh, Fall down there by Teleco Plains. Yeah, the, uh, the the fallout there is, uh, I think that's pretty pretty set in stone. Yeah. Uh, Region 2, 3A, Alcoa, my goodness, Alcoa, uh, followed by Kingston. Kingston with that very impressive win against Loudon last week, followed by Union County, Austin East, Scott High. By the way, Kingston, Austin East playing tonight. So that will uh, solidify that second place spot for Kingston if they can get that win against the Roadrunners. Yeah, I, I, I think that one's pretty set. Two. So Region 2, 4A, Anderson County sitting at 4-3 and three overall, but the three losses are against great competition. Pretty, pretty good pretty good games. Uh, Anderson County playing West and I, as we said. I'm looking forward to that Anderson County-Gibbs matchup. Gibbs sitting at 5-1. and one. Uh, They've improved a lot the past couple of years, and now they've got a home field they can play on. They do, yeah. So, that doesn't make a difference. So good for them there. So moving on, uh, Region 2, 5A, West and Powell in the same region. My goodness. And then Halls. Halls at 6-1. and one. That's another. Region 2 across all classifications is just killer. Yeah. They, uh, as you look through, the top two or three teams in each of these legitimately have a shot to, to go four rounds deep into this thing. Yeah. Maybe, maybe even maybe even to Chattanooga. Yeah. And so you see Region 3, 5A, uh, Oak Ridge, followed by Lenore City, Clinton, Campbell County, Carnes. Of course, Lenore City Clinton playing tonight, and the winner of that game we uh, think is probably playoff bound, uh, but could even end up with a home game yeah, home in the game. playoffs. Exactly. So at least first round. Yeah. So like I said, it's uh, Clinton is well on track, even still after having probably what they call a disappointing season. You see, Region Two Six A just just crazy that in uh, a season where you only play ten games, Bearden is, has won forty two. <laughs> <laughs> no, wow. No, that's supposed to say four and two. And uh, Bearden's couple of losses also yeah. against, like, killer competition. But Absolutely. But Bearden has an opportunity to win that thing. And you look at Maryville. Maryville hasn't lost its region. They've won the region 22 straight times. And they're in danger of not hosting a playoff game. Well, they're not going to host a playoff game. But, I mean, they're sitting down there at, like, fourth. You know, something could happen. It could. Yeah, Maribel will drop out of the playoff picture entirely. It you know, could. You know. So. Stranger things have happened. It has. We've got about five minutes left until kickoff here. And so we've got a game that we need to preview. It is Rockwood. It is Harriman. And we are here at Rockwood. We will preview that game as soon as we get back to finish up our Lane Walden of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Our story starts with a promise made to the communities of East Tennessee. A promise to always look forward to the horizon and past it. A promise to help you live well. At Covenant Health, whenever you enter one of our hospitals, visit any of our physicians or talk to us on the phone, we will welcome you and your family as one of our own. Because it's about you and it's about time. Covenant Health. For every moment. And back to your OAB Law Game of the Week and the Elaine Wald of East Tennessee Properties pregame show. Elaine is a real estate professional serving mostly Anderson, Blunt, Cumberland, Loudon, Knox, McMinn, Monroe, Morgan, Roan, and Scott Counties. She does millions in sales a year, and she can help you get into your next home and or sell your current home. Give her a call or text at 423-619-6748. That's 423-619-6748. We're getting close to kickoff, so let's preview our matchup tonight. It's Harriman at Rockwood. An interesting note that you made earlier this season is that all the Roan County coaches are alumni from the school they coach. Rockwood's head man, John Webb, and he's just a couple years older than Harriman head coach Travis Tapp. They actually played each other in this rivalry. Yeah, not only do they play each other, they were both fullbacks. You know, I thought that was interesting, too. Uh, and to them, this rivalry is ever-present. You know, it's like the turning of the leaves in the fall, a slight chill in the air, you know, the, the big old harvest moon 
moon we saw last week. Uh, it's just a part of this time of year. These players come up playing cutters and hoppers, and, and they all know this rivalry from these two communities, and they know each other. So, you know, the, the records really don't matter. This is a big game this moment tonight. Sure is. Harriman's had it rough this season. This is a team that lost to Wartburg by three, lost to Oliver Springs by one, lost to Oakdale by two. But then last week, Telego Plains was in town, and the Blue Devils put up 46 points while holding the Bears to just 20. Harriman had only previously held an opponent under 21 points once, and that was the previous week against Oakdale. And prior to that single win, Harriman had only scored more than 18 points once, so the 46-point eruption was welcome sight at HHS. It's a young team that seems to be improving every single week. Getting into the postseason is an uphill climb at this point, but a win tonight still keeps the hopes of that alive. Yeah, I spoke with Coach Taft this week, and they're about six points away from three more wins. Uh, this is a young team, especially up front, and they're getting better each week. He was bragging on that. Uh, they broke through last week and got that first win, and they're hopeful that confidence will carry over to this week. Harriman's young, but so is Rockwood. Over a quarter of the team were seniors in 2002, and they made up a lot of the offensive and defensive production. Rockwood's 3-1 and one in this region, losing only to Oliver Springs with a matchup against Oakdale and Coalfield looming after this one. This game is really important as far as playoff seating goes, and the Tigers still have an opportunity to host in the first round. You know, Region 2A, like we are saying, is a tough single-A region, probably the toughest in the state. While Harriman's on the outside looking in at the playoff picture. Brockwood really still controls their own destiny with a win here. With a loss, they may end up on the road. You know, that kind of gets uh, up in the air just a little bit. There's nothing like playing at home during the playoffs. That is the true home field advantage. It's a rivalry game, so let's just be as cliche as possible and yell out. You can throw out the record books. Dr. Dan, it's time for your do's and don'ts. Harriman, the dues for Harriman. Continue the success from last week. Both sides of the ball. Number two, handle the Rockwood defensive stunts and pressures and blitzes. I think those things are coming tonight. Uh, number three, play through the adversity like we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Next play. And the don'ts? Don't let Rockwood grind the clock. And don't get predictable on offense. For Rockwood. Rockwood, the dues. Run the ball, control the clock. Get the speed on the edge early and then get the trap going as well. And the don't. The don't, don't let Harriman get happy. And what I mean is don't let him see a lot of success early. Keep the pressure on. Don't turn the ball over. And don't make those unforced mental errors. All right, that's Dr. Dan's do's and don'ts as we prepare for our Davis Funeral Homes kickoff. Davis Funeral Homes, two locations to serve you in Wartburg and in Harriman. Go to davisfuneralhomes.com for more information and see what they can do for you. So as we get set, kicking the ball off for Rockwood is Hayden McLean. We'll see a lot of him 